hey? Could you do? Yeah. <laughs> it's all right, man. It's good. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I have my friend Jason with me today. We've known each other for 30, 30, odd, yeah, 30 odd years, 35 years or so, ever since. Did you go to kindergarten? Uh, I was around the same area, but primary school is probably the, the best point. Yeah. Kindergarten. Yeah. Deer Park Moss. Yeah, but, yeah. There we go. Deer Park Moss. Yes. Then, then to yeah. Deer Park Secondary College. Yeah. If I don't know what it's called now. <laughs> uh, cool. But welcome. Thanks again. This is cool. You volunteered like a jump. You jumped. No worries. Yeah. Happy to come here and share. Yeah, cool. Talk about the good stuff that we did. Yeah, cool. And the bad and the ugly. I know. What made you take the step? What made you say, all right, I'm going to do this? Uh, I'm always here to support a friend. So if you need people and to get used to it and practice and just, uh, and I'm not shy to say a word here and there, you know that. Yeah. Um, but just uh, just for a bit of fun too. Like, yeah, cool. Why not? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, because yeah, I think it's like, you know, I've, I've thought of doing the podcasting for probably about 12 months um just thinking on and off in terms of the idea and like what you asked me before about mm. what was the main motivation yep. of doing the podcast and pretty much was focused around you know friendships and the evolution of it essentially yep. so because i think where you know you and me and another handful of friends you know we're still quite strong in terms of our friendships and how long we've known each other for yep. we've all grew, went to the same primary school yep. and high school but yeah we're still extremely connected in some way shape or form yep. and the strength of that is something i think that a lot of people don't have or understand even in this modern age yep. we grew in the era of like having no technology to really reconnect once we left high school yeah we grew up with phones had cords and a dial yeah pretty funny yeah, yeah. yeah. and vhs yeah oh, yeah 100 <laughs> yeah, percent. so yeah. yeah you were probably one of the first people to be driving uh, yeah probably <laughs> like, yeah. In our route, so you were like yeah. the guy to take us to maccas yeah although in high school and stuff. yeah no, no although the fun part was most of us including you not me but most, like you dex brian yeah Joel, they all had older siblings, and so we would yeah, like yeah. they would drive us around everywhere, right? Like, yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah good There's that yeah. all going to parties. We'd all be at the same parties and things like yeah. that. So yeah, so we were fortunate enough that. But no, we grew up in an era of very little tech. If we were going to make plans, it'd be at school. We'd hope everyone would meet in the same place at the same time. Yeah. We wouldn't. We couldn't really call, or we'd call before we'd leave and say we're going to be at a certain place at a certain time, and that's kind of how it was. I guess it was. Kids that are leaving school now, they're kind of like, you know, when, when, you know, they finish up year 12 or whenever they're finished school and at the same time, you know, they can pretty much, they say goodbye, but they see each other online in half an hour or 10 minutes. Yeah. That, that disconnect is, is sad, I feel, in some way. Yeah. Uh, but they're also always connected. Like, yeah. there is never a disconnect or a turn off or a stop where it's like you can be at school with someone, like in these days, you can be at school with someone during the day and you can be on socials at night. Like, my daughter is, I just see it all the time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they're just constantly connected and constantly chatting. It's like, it's it's kind of interesting to watch, but also you need to have that off button. You need you need to disconnect and stop. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. kind of like you know we had fun being outside and running around and playing and riding bikes and yeah. you know jumping and playing ball and doing all that sort of stuff, which is not happening a lot. No, these days. No, exactly. Yeah, it's just been taken over by whatever distraction you can have in your head. Has there been like big concerns for you, you and your, your kids? Uh, yeah, it it is a concern. I just it's just more a need of balance. Like if they're at school studying hard and on devices as well, you don't want to come home to do the same thing. Otherwise, their face is locked on the screen. I would assume and probably safe to say they can probably consume much more information than we ever could. Yeah. 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 But I just don't know how much they're processing and retaining. Like I just don't know how real or how you know, much they can do. So it's just balancing. And you need that time to disconnect so you can process and you can stop and think about what you did that day. Right, because you need and like we never knew this word when we were growing up, but you need that time to reflect. It's it's very important because yeah. you just need to work. Okay, I learned this, I did this, I didn't do this well, I can do this better. Like just that is important to do, yeah. which we never did when. Out of late, you know, we that age, we you know we were, we're all we were all yeah. experts back then, were we as well? Yeah, at everything yeah. and <laughs> and invincible <laughs> at everything. Yeah. And your, yeah. Our parents were just like, okay, you'll work it out. Yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll be right. You'll yeah. get there. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah. And it was so true. Like some of the yeah. some of the stern. Like I remember when we were growing up and we like. Talking with my parents, I was talking to your parents, and like they they would have some solid advice that you would yeah. think get, get, get lost. I'm not like, that's not going to make any sense. You go now, holy shit! Yeah. Like you're going yeah. that those words yeah. saying true. Like, exactly. you, like and my John's just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. and it's funny you say all of that because there's a part of me that's actually began to really realize the importance of taking a step back and kind of seeing the bigger picture yeah. because. Like I've been working in, in yeah in the mental health field, um, you know, just over just under a year and a half now. Yeah. And at the same time, it's like you see the way the mind works 
yeah, you know, with some individuals that are kind of, you know, have an illness, mm-hmm. but at the same time, like you're here there to facilitate yeah. the part of in their mind that is somewhat is disconnected from all that as well. Yeah. So you learn a lot in patience. You learn a lot of um, like acceptance in some way. Yeah. You know, for you know, not being able to change the whole world. You know, or being able to heal the world as well. Yeah. So yeah, I think so. What is really interesting for me is the more you learn now and understand, you look back at the time we spent growing up, and you can start to see how some people where you thought was weird could actually have been mental health. Yeah. Right. And so it's like it's really interesting now. Like well, you know, we were we weren't assholes but sometimes we could be really mean like all kids can be really mean right and so yeah you, you look at that in hindsight and you're thinking holy shit they could have been in serious pain they could have been hurting really hard and like we were making fun of that that's not right right but we i mean we didn't know any better so the more we can educate and teach our kids and like that's the balance with social media like they're starting to get that message out there on all the platforms and channel I- even in schools right there's mental health and awareness yeah, in schools yeah, harassment now. all that stuff like in work and all that and yeah yeah and they respect that work and the tv commercials and like and that's just much more important just so mm-hmm. people kids can understand that you know you don't know what kind of situation someone's going through therefore you you, you can't like assume or make fun of because you just it's not going to make the situation any better so like yeah, yeah. mental health aspect now is much more or like I use the word interesting, but it's just to be aware of it, like on any yeah. any circumstance, anyone's circumstance, even your own circumstance. Like you're not always going to be like in the best of moods, and so I always say interesting too. To yeah. be honest, yeah. Like there's there's yeah, you know, I've met some clients or just people in general, and and like it is it's you know they're struggling. Yeah, but it's fascinating. Like I hate to say it, but it's fascinating to think like, wow, how did you, how did this, how did it all happen? What is it? And a lot of it is trauma. A lot of it is, you know, based on, you know, just you know, strongly, it is substance abuse. But that substance abuse is, you know, to cope with the trauma. Yeah. They've, you know, they've yeah. found an escape way. They've yeah, they've escaped, get out of it. So, yeah. but it's, it, it, and again, you you probably know this more than me, but even on the service, when you look at, like, even when you look at that individual that's hurting that had substance abuse, no. It, it's it's almost there's a cycle in yeah. a family yeah. of how it starts right and so that that cycle's never broken so no. you know there's 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 movements and words around breaking the cycle so yeah. me and you know yeah. sure talk about this all the time and making sure that our kids are set up as, as best they can be because it's not going to be perfect it's going to yeah, yeah, yeah. can't control yeah yeah but breaking whatever cycle you need to yeah from that family upbringing or from that trauma is is like something everyone needs to talk about but very hard to do right because like it's a choice though isn't, isn't it at the end of the yeah. day but like it, it, a lot of it can be environmental and that's the problem as you say like they're still stuck in that circle they're still growing up in that house or that neighborhood or still associating themselves with yeah. that circle of friends yep and like that, that's you know whatever is toxic you begin to realize yeah. you know that if, if your life's going down as a simple path yes and you've got you know all family and friends behind you or some people are saying you're making big mistakes. Yeah. Then part of you needs to go like, ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Like that's when you need to take a step back. But hindsight is hi- hindsight is great, isn't it? Yeah. So, like, and this is kind of what I'm I, I'm learning along the way is like when you're in it, you don't know what's good, no, or you don't know what's bad. You just yeah. you just know what is. And so you have to have someone like now the education is a lot better. Maybe not reaching everywhere, and maybe not people understanding. Mm. You have to know what services are available to you, so you can feel safe. In taking action, yeah. In any, you know, whether it's mental health or even domestic violence or that kind of stuff, that's just, you know, it's just the education and and not being afraid to ask for help. Yeah, exactly. Or yeah. Or, or your friends and family not being afraid to step in when needs to, right? Because it's it's always that challenge. Yeah. It, it can be a choice, but sometimes choice is hard and you don't know what you have yeah. available. So, but yeah, yeah, no, you're right. And there's a day and age now where all that information yeah. is in the device in your pocket. Pretty much, so many yeah. services out there. Yeah. It's just because of you know people like to say COVID is been a major yeah. you know a major issue as to why a lot of the services are extremely congested. And I guess that's a problem as well. But you know, yeah, it's once again back to what you said earlier: retaining that information, being able to hold on to it, being able to find a way through it is also like it can be hard too. But also, yeah. the topic of today is yeah. extremely important in friendships, right? Exactly. So no matter like, and again, I, the way I, I see it for all our friends that we, you know, whether we, you know, stay connected or, you know, the core group that we have, as you know, mm-hmm. um, we cannot see each other for 10 or 15 years, or if not more. And that's happened to us, by the way, right? Like we've not spoken, but we pick up the phone. It's like we spoke yesterday. Exactly. Yeah. So that, that's kind of. Yeah, exactly. That, yeah. That, I don't even know how to explain that dynamic or that connection because that's really hard, but it's just something we have. As you say, that's an in, interconnectedness in yeah. you know, how we grow up and yeah. the you know, our families, our friends, yeah. the area that we grew up in as well. Yeah. 
um, as just the moral compass that we all have, yeah, you yeah. know, in some, some, in some level. You know what I mean? Yeah, the, the moral will feed off each other. Absolutely. So, yeah. But it's like you, mm. you can't, and I'll use the word, you can't buy that. All right. You can't learn it. It just becomes, and it's all around trust, loyalty, right, integrity. All those kind of words just make the mold of what how our friendship is yeah, sort of yeah. evolved. You're throwing up <laughs> a little bit. I tell you, it, like I just in the last five years, I started reading a lot and learning a lot. Yeah. Thing, and it, especially when I knew, like, like Shirley and I, and like much more academic than I am. And she's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she's she she's a she's like a psych nurse though, is she? Used to be, yes. Uh, used so studying psychology, not a psych nurse. So she studied psychology and she was doing nursing. So she like she was looking to go into psychology, but it was a little bit hard in terms of their phone calls and stuff. And then she went into nursing. Yeah, yeah. and then we all decided to have kids, and that's kind of when it all changed. Yes, and yeah. She you did take time off to bring the kids up, and then get, went back. Yeah, in. no, no, she's yeah. still looking, still still growing, still looking after the kids. So we made a conscious choice that. Um, Oh, I thought you. I thought you honestly went back in. No, no, no. no well, okay. Yeah. So okay. conscious choice to raise. It. We didn't want anyone else raising our kids when we could do it for ourselves. So how old? Ten. Uh, sorry, no. Ten, which is my youngest, and thirteen. Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice, cool. Yeah. And like going back to, she's uh, yeah, she's now martial arts. So they were doing martial arts just before COVID, mm. right? And then when COVID hit, everything sort of stopped. But now her passion is soccer, to mm. to the point where so she's played for the last. This will be her third year. Mm. We've moved to a different club. So she's playing um, she's playing so, uh, like soccer outdoors and then now she's playing for two futsal teams, indoor soccer. Oh, wow. Well. That's it. Yeah, that's, cool. that's all it is. Yep. And my youngest one does uh, swimming. Yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. All in summary and all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Soccer is Gizben. Yeah. yeah. And futsal it's all it's Gizben at the Yeah, cool. So all pretty much yeah, nice and close. Yeah, down our end, yeah. <laughs> and that's a travel over the whiskey. It's not that far, yeah. That's all good. <laughs> kind of funny me and Beck actually went away to a place in Gisborne and everyone was laughing at the side really. Oh, but it feels far enough. It was nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were like, fuck, I'll leave us alone. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it feels far enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was good. So so like yeah, I guess with you because you done martial arts many when you were younger. Yeah. 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 And got to a black belt, everything. Yes. Because we were quite had an admirable view of doing that. Yeah. And you were it was, it was you're, the, you're the biggest you're the big man in, in the crowd. Uh, <laughs> I was focused. So yeah. that, so that, 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 I get asked this question all the time. Yeah, and, no, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And so I want to it. Because like so it was because of, so I am like we talk about ADHD yeah. on the spectrum and all those kind of things. We talk right? about ADHD, you know? We, yeah. we can. Mm. Right? And so I am I am hundred percent sure that I had ADHD. Okay, cool. But didn't know didn't have yeah. those services to go and test and assess and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, again, yeah. I wasn't the best behaved kid. I had a lot of energy. Yeah. And my parents didn't know what to do with me. Yeah. Until they said, we've got to get him into something. Yeah. So it was the, the martial arts school that opened up Deer Park Primary yeah. School. It was, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, then, and then, you know, Jordan and Marco, don't yeah. listen, like they took me on and it started from there. And yeah. from that point on, it was more around discipline, yeah. consistency, yeah. and then focus. Boom. And those three things never leave you. Yeah. yeah. Once you learn that, and all your podcasts and jockling and all that kind of stuff, you'll know that's what he talks about. Yeah. Yeah. And, that, and that's one primary reason why I why you as as a friend. Yeah. Like because because of those qualities. Yeah. And I think a lot of us back in the day, like even though, as I said to you earlier, I called you an alpha. <laughs> you can <laughs> say, like, don't call me that. No, but, don't call me an alpha. Yeah, it means. But it's also like back then, it was like you were. You were the the because you're you're a Leo in terms of your, yep. your birth, you know, yep. born in August yep. and all that, and you were like a very confident individual. Yeah, but at the same time, like I never knew back then that you could have potentially been diagnosed with ADHD. Hundred uh, so percent, even have yeah. all that energy. But like that, that's one thing that struck me about you back then is that you had the discipline to do all of that. You seemed quite structured, and even your whole family was as well. Yeah, if your mum. Your mum and your dad, like they were training, like in the gym, yeah, yeah. like, at, like you know, all their fam, all their parents are doing what they were doing. But yeah. these were all like connected in some strong yeah, way, yeah. and it was just um, awesome to see. Like it was yeah. different. So, so you were drinking water, yeah. Like, well, I, I never, like, yeah, but like when we were teenagers, we we're drinking soft drinks and well, I never, shit. You know what I mean? But you were very, that, that, very yeah, very disciplined. disciplined. But it was also yeah, that I, so, like, my taste buds didn't like it. So it was easy. Oh, yeah. No, no one likes water. Yeah. And no, I was boring as fuck. No, but well, I did it. I, I loved it. Mm-hmm. Um, um, but no, but soft drinks never killed to me. That never, never mm-hmm. did. Unless it had a little bit of scotch in it when we were growing up. Right? Well, there you go. <laughs> that, that changed a little bit. Yeah, but, tech, tech. But yeah. But uh, no, no. So 
like again, uh, it, it, yeah, family, like yeah, growing up was good. It was solid. Like family unit was pretty good. Yeah. But again, yeah. like in, in any family situation, it's different because you know my parents divorced, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's like we did have it good for a while, and then it just just things didn't work out a certain way, and then they, they got a divorce, and then like we had to grow up pretty fast after that because it was just different. Yeah. And watching two parents like go their separate ways. Yeah. I think I was around fourteen or fifteen when I actually did it. Like, yeah. And that just changed the dynamics of your world. Oh, yeah. You know how how you do that, and then yeah, and then that also drives and changes on who you are, and so you take that and saying, okay, like back then I didn't know, but you know, growing up, meeting Shirley, getting married, you know, going to have kids, you go, you definitely don't want to repeat that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah, it's hard. Hundred percent. It's like it's really hard because you want to make sure your environment is good. You want to make sure your social networks are good. Your connections, and then like you, the influence, because once kids come into the pictures, you're the role model. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you are the role model, and then anyone else around them, like you're making conscious choices of who to introduce them to because they become the role model. Yeah, right. So it, it's like it's just you, you 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 tend to move towards how you want to influence your children, but as well as how you want to influence other like it's just yeah, it's how you just really want to improve your quality yeah. in life overall. Yeah, like you don't have to yeah because they want to you know as you say like a lot of people from the past that you know they they go through their own problems but at the same time you don't have to be a catalyst for the next generation correct do you want to break that cycle and that's kind of what we talk about but again and as you get older i don't know if this happens to you but it's just like you tolerate less like you know yeah. it's and it's not about like you just don't have time to deal with like manipulators or narcissists or anyone like that that yeah yeah, we, the, like, yeah, was, yeah. I, you know i grew up to always be kind and generous people like just the way just as what up parents yeah. very much influenced that um you know like like just naturally and then like you be kind to people people are kind to you but then there are people that just don't understand that yeah and how that you know, and you just don't really want, like not much to those people yeah. yeah yeah i feel like i want to save the world sometimes you yeah yeah, yeah. don't you can't i know not your job i know yes <laughs> but i think can but Got a good cape sometimes. Yeah, no, no, no. But, I but think, yeah, no, 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 that's that's how it feels though. It's kind of like you have this. We just have this moral compass that's so good. Yeah, and so, like you know, and people yeah. come to you for advice and they 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 lean on you. And yeah, it's, it's a good feeling. It's fantastic when you can actually be there for someone. Yeah. So let me retract my statement. Yeah, yeah. If you want to go, yeah. right? Like yeah, yeah. So, but what I what I recommend you need. No, I don't. I, don't, I agree with you. I don't believe it. We, we, you know, it's just that even Superman has a, a bad day as well. well he's got really, right? That's what he's, he's cryptic and I. Yeah. As as and, he's, and he's constantly learning from our mistakes as humans because as he wanted yeah. to be more of a human. So let's take Superman as a great example, right? Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll give you an analogy, right? So Superman can save the world, <laughs> but from time to time, he needs to refill his cup. Yeah. And you know how he does that? Blows into the atmosphere. His son. It's his, Absolutely. It's the sun. So whatever your son is, mm -hmm. right, you need to find that. Otherwise, yeah. you can't help anyone else. Yeah. So that's why you just need to take the time out. He yeah. gets the break, and you need to refill your cup, and then you can go again. Okay. No, you're right. Or that's why. No, no, you're right. No, you're right. Then that's why, you know, as us growing up without technology and and social media and stuff like that, like you had your martial arts, you had we we had our fitness, you yeah, know, gym, the gym. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I'm very fortunate to be getting back into the gym yeah. now. You know, because it's all it's always been there, but like the consistency yeah. and just the fact that it, it keeps you grounded and it's your space to actually yeah. Yeah, the discipline, all that energy yeah. and the frustration out yeah. and come home and go. Yeah, that was a good workout. That was really good, you know, and that's that's the key. And I don't think a lot of people understand it because, as you say, like they they're just constantly connected. Yeah. And um, you know, we we understand the benefit of now working the jobs that we do, and then going away for a few days, like to the countryside, somewhere just completely different, completely disconnected, yeah. to actually feel, yeah. feel to get yourself grounded again to come back and go. Oh, yeah, it's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It just it just it yeah. refills you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, nah, that's it. So oh, awesome. Cool. What else? <laughs> you got the questions. You got the questions, you did, buddy. So you, questions. I don't know. <laughs> going back to like you, you know, you, you went through the things with your parents uh, around when you were fifteen. Was there somebody else that stood up and helped you, like get through a lot of what you did, or did you kind of like connect with you with your brother? Yeah, me was like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah because close. we ended up in the house. Like, yeah, together. Mm. Um, and then it, like. It was my brother, but then we stayed with my mum. My mum was well, mostly with me. They went through high school. Um, yeah, just, 
I don't remember if there was anyone specifically. I mean, friends, a lot, a lot of the friends I used to connect with, talk to, and I was at, you know, decks nearly every weekend. Yeah. Like doing parties and things like that and being the roadie. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yep. Which, which kept you distracted and was fun. And 100%. Yeah. And it's like, it just, it just helped. It just helped distract or just focus on something different than as opposed to yeah, yeah. instead of being there. But again, it's like it had to happen. That wasn't my thing. The parents separated because they just they weren't like they couldn't be together anymore. Yep. They grew apart. Yeah. And so that that had to happen, mm. which is okay. And then, you know, now it's all good because we've got grandkids and kids and they all still hang out and yeah, yeah amicable and civil and so yeah. But um yeah, no no one that stood out that I that I would say Help. Like I had my grandparents. My grandfather was always there, so he yeah. was really good. He's really strong. Yeah. He's eighty-five now. He's just a rocker. He's like, yeah, yeah, wow, yeah. Cool. Well, so he's he's good. And yeah, my grandmother was there to help, and, that, and the uncle's there to talk to as well. But yeah, but just you have to grow up fast. That's all. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but it's good though because you've got the solid foundation. And yeah, the family and all. Yeah, and you guys are quite religious as well. Uh, yes, we're all okay. So interesting journey. Like, so I, I brought brought up Catholic. Grandparents Catholic. Mm. Um, my dad was Methodist, so it's it's a Christ, it's under Christianity, but it's not direct Catholic. But he used to come to church with us, so yeah, yeah. So he he and he still practices that. He still wants me to go to church. Like, mm, mm, yeah, cool, cool, cool. And then parents, yeah, he's, he's, Fiji, your mother's is Maltese, correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So sorry about it. Diversity one hundred and one. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That was all right. <laughs> uh, and then and then so yeah, and then my my mum was Catholic, then went uh, switched to Christianity uh, with my brother, so they kind of. Hit, hit religion, it's just different. Yep, yep, yeah. Ah, uh, cool. And you're still very strong in your faith as well? Yeah, yeah. So kids go to a Catholic school. Yeah. Yeah, we pray, we we talk about God often. Yeah, yeah cool. In, in our lives, so that's things that we do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get asked so many questions that I can't answer and we, we talk through too. So I don't, I, don't, I don't read the Bible, you know, and yeah, they go to a Catholic yeah. school, so religion is part of their curriculum. Yeah, yeah. cool, cool. So yeah. a teacher. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, well, we say that, but we, we talk about what it means, you know, like it's they go to yeah. all the sacraments at school. The Eucharist, you know, obviously baptism at age first and Eucharist, Holy Communion, um, sacraments, then all over my head, man. Yeah, that's okay. A lot of that yeah. stuff. So, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's, it, yeah. You can practice the faith, so ceremonies, so journeys in yeah. that religion. And then that's what yeah. they're kind of doing. Um, yeah. And so the, my daughter in high school now, so she's, you know, she's doing different. The next sacrament, probably for her, whether she chooses to or not, would be marriage. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And we'll do her, can I always get this mix? I think it's confirmation in grade six. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Crazy. Do you believe that religion could help with a lot of issues these, these in this day and age? So, believing in something, and whether it's the right something, is is kind of a, is a question I want to ask. So, we chose when we moved to Sunbury, we chose the school that we did, not just because of the it was Catholic and the religion, is because of the values. Yeah, cool. right. So the values they run in the school is respect. It's like it's respect, yeah. resilient, like three hours, and I always forget and responsible. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. The, so, yeah, and, responsible. And, and yeah. so you have, and like again, it's like yeah, cool. being new parents. We we didn't know, like we liked it. We liked the school. We walked through it. Yeah, we, we heard about community values. We you know we read reviews. And yeah. go, that's kind of what we want. So it was around the community feel and mm. the values and how they how they operate in that school. So that was good. Yeah, and because we were both religious, we we're, were fine with that. Um, and we just. I mean, based on the way we practice, the way we teach our kids is, you know, be open-minded a little bit. You know, like there's this, you know, everyone has aspects of religion and, co- and culture with what they practice. Yeah. You know, there's Buddhism, there's Hinduism, mm-hmm. all walks of life, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And some have things that are good, some things that maybe you don't understand until you, you find out. But yeah. Catholic is where we land. That's kind of... Yeah, yeah, no, cool, cool. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Because like there is, there's a moral, you know, there is that moral compass in every every religion as well and how it's interpreted and shared and sure. accepted yeah. is, I think, a big key as well. And like, there's yep. a, you know, like probably, I think that the misunderstanding with it all leads to the frustration and anger against cultures. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in some ways, but yeah. you're ideally trying to fend do the same thing. Yeah. you know, throughout but life. When we were growing up, right, and we were yeah. kids, and God blessing Dennis, mm. like we we tease him about pork, right? All the time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right now, we wouldn't do that so much, right? But yeah, like, yeah. And, and more probably now in the workforce, like because I lead a team and all that. I make it a conscious effort to understand people's backgrounds and religion because you, you we have to factor that into the working, right? So like when Ramadan kicks in, <laughs> yeah, I, have, yeah, yeah. I have some guys that will just say, I can work, but I will not be I will not be present because I'm my, it's just, yeah. they're not eating. Yeah, because right? yeah, like, they can't eat till sun, yeah, sun, down. Yeah. Dust, yeah. Dust, and, dust, and, yeah. and that becomes things that you need to be mindful of and appreciate yeah. and just take into consideration. So, yeah, so, yeah. so whether you call it religion or something to believe in is like, you know, 
too intertwined. I think it's as long as it serves thing. your purpose, like serves you in a positive way. Yes. Yes. Now there, it's, yeah, there are bad negative situations which you can any pick up the new much information maybe or well, it's more ha- what your beliefs drive you to do right mm. so like you, you you know you take whatever situation you've heard in the news recently and all that kind of stuff yeah and you just don't know so you just you just like it gets frustrating doesn't it i get i get like i'm not i'm not religious but i i think in, in recent times there's, there's been more more of a faith element with how i've chosen to live life mm. and just as you say like you go away plane sorry <laughs> as yeah yeah, as you chose to go go through life, it's more like yeah, you, you become less tolerable of people's stupidity and yeah. just blatant ignorance more than anything, which is very frustrating. So yeah, mm. yeah, I don't know what the answer is. Part of me is always like, what we really need is that alien invasion to really put us in a position where we're kind of, you know, we realize that hey, there is something else out there that yeah. could potentially be better than or stronger than what we are. Yeah. Yeah, you know, make us really realize where we are yeah. in the world. I mean, again, I don't know. anchoring back to the topic of friends, mm-hmm. you are influenced how you fr- who your friends are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you look at, I mean, most of us in the circle that we grew up in grew up Catholic, like the, yeah, 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 and Filipinos generally are super. Mm-hmm. I've noticed that more now. Yeah, yeah, with yeah, I just Brian and all that. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I knew. Yeah, yeah. They were all, like even mm-hmm. in the way they celebrate, you know, Easter in the Philippines is they actually have someone which they nail to the cross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like mm-hmm. hardcore, right? Mm-hmm. But again, that's that's the way they celebrate it. But we mm-hmm. we, we grew up that way, and yeah, and it, it, you, it's not so much that you're drawn to that, but you learn like the values and the qualities and the beliefs, and you take yeah, what yeah. you want. It can yeah. be very ceremonial, yes, but like you take the good things that you you want from that, and you that's how you shape your values and your beliefs when you get older. No, that's it. Go back to your childhood. Did you did you grow up here in Australia, or were you predominantly? Did you? No, no, I'm born and bred. Yeah, Aussie mate, true blue. Yeah. That's in Footscray? I born born in Footscray Hospital. Yeah. Yeah. So was I. But yeah, yeah. most of us <laughs> I were. I think that's probably the only major hospital. Right? Yeah. 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 But um yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure Yuli was as well. Yeah. yeah. Probably Frederick if I asked him hard enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Henry, who's in Sydney now, but yeah, Boogie, they, they probably all did. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's true. Uh, no, but it was all I was literally born in Footscray and then I think I was maybe eighteen months old and then they bought the house in Deer Park. Yeah. That's, that's, where, f- that's where I grew up. What's your first memory of being in the house? The first ever youngest memory? It's probably two. One was playing with He-Man and Masters of the Universe in the TV room next to the good old gas heater. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. With the brown shag carpet. Yeah. And the, and the tube TV. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then the other one was me and my dad in the bathroom flexing when I was like really young. We're doing that. Fuck oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's brilliant. And he still had hair and then I, I had hair. So with yeah, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. You got to do an uh, a um, uh, before and after yeah. photo. Yeah. Yeah. Before and after, he's probably still be bigger than mine. Yeah, <laughs> does he still train as well? I he rides a lot of bike. Oh wow, and cool. does, does a lot of walking. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Yeah, because he was a Toyota and didn't do anything after that. Uh, yeah. No, he retired after Toyota. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah nice. That's right. Your mum, she's still so she's retired, but she's still very active. Still very much involved in her yeah. church. Looks after her mum and dad a lot. Yep, he lives. Not far from us, yeah, yeah, no, no. and it still cuts hair, you know what I mean? Still does, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very much don't wake you much business on a mask. So. Yeah, no, not at all. But it's time. Well, still cuts my dad's hair. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's how, like unreal. They're still it along. Yeah, yeah, and Derek, like he's because yeah. he's still doing the pastor of a church. Uh, he he's moved on from that church and he's doing church at home with a group of people. So yeah, he's still leading. Yep. He's still leading faith. Yep, yep, yep. Um, two kids, boy, girl. Married to Ange, he liked Amariah's kids, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh, excellent. Yeah. That's good. Everyone's doing all right. Is he still in the original house? No. No, no, he's living out. Huh. Yeah. I don't know what. Near the airport, then, that way. Yeah. So, no one. No, they're sold. They got sold. Oh, you're sold. Yeah, they got cool. sold many, tw- 2000 or 20, many moons. Because that basketball ring's still up. It's still there. Yeah. You see it? Every time I drive past, yeah. I'll see it. I'm like, oh, yeah, no, no. It's no. like, uh, still up. Yeah, I still remember, like, I. Like, uh, maybe you're saying, like, Derek was was there at one point, like, it, everyone else had moved out. Yeah, clearly. Yeah, he was there for a couple um, of years. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that basketball like, ring is a product of my, my dad being a welder. Fitter. Yeah, yeah, 100%. <laughs> and the whole, like, pulley <laughs> system with a yeah, but that pull down machine. That's, that's like, what we would do. Yeah. You would make yeah. your own stuff when you yeah. can't afford it, or, yeah, yeah. like, you would, like, you ask, and, like, most most parents, so the, like, we're all, like, trades, right? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Dad. My dad is yeah. a fitter and turner. Yeah, yeah. So, I was yeah. going to say, your dad is a fitter and turner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they, they grew up with their hands, whereas 
Mm. You know, like, and so they would be able to build stuff without thinking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you start them then, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, cool. Yeah, I remember that garage so many times. Yeah, just yeah. yeah. So that's that's what we yeah. So into the gym, or train, run or run bike to your house. Yep. and train. And, yep. So yeah. we did we did the martial arts in the backyard for a few about months. three weekends. <laughs> yeah, there's a few. But I I, used to, I trained my <laughs> uncle a lot. Oh, does it? Yeah, cool, he used cool. to come after work. Yeah, once nice. a week and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shirley's your first ever partner? No. Oh, okay. No, no, I had... We might go into that then. Yeah. So when did you meet? <laughs> uh, so we first met. I thought it was around like 15, 16. Yeah, we were. Yeah, yeah no, but we, but we were friends. We were okay. friends yeah. when we first met. Yep, yep. Um, and they'd have to be friends. Yeah, of course. But, anyway. um, but we just, we just, we grew up and then like we met each other. Then we sort of, um, uh, we drew, Sort of like lost contact on kind of stuff, and it was only till like sort of five years later. I think it was like nineteen, eighteen, uh, nineteen, twenty. We saw each other again, and then kind of when it started the relationship. Yeah, right, cute. Ah, oh, good, good. And so that's what close to another. Like we know each other for probably thirty, and then yeah, yeah, been together for that's like twenty. I know we've been married for sixteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, it's good. <laughs> yeah, no, no. It's better you didn't. Yeah, no. <laughs> Maybe if you didn't. Why? Well, if you record that and say, then I'd be in like, a bit of trouble. But no, you can no. pause it. I can edit it. It's all right. No, 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 no. no, no, no. So 16 and then, yeah, 20, 25 years, like we've known each other. It's yeah. been it's been really I, I good and, and very interesting for us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because uh, good. I mean, it's, we come from very different backgrounds. Mm. We grew up in the same area. Yeah. Like when I was growing up, I was half Maltese, half Fijian. So I was already by myself, mm. not for my brother. Okay. Right, so yeah, we're yeah. we're a culture of one, <laughs> right? And then yeah. and like you, you you work out where growing up, you work out where do you fit. And then I kind of not that I I, I didn't it just ended up the way I kind of sort of fit right in with the Filipino culture, and that's kind of how I grew up in that, right? And you you, you, you and I yeah, I, I don't know yeah, how I worked out, but it worked. I, I, I was the token brownie, you were the token whitey, bad. <laughs> and then that, that's it. We, we were the two. Yeah, yeah, I don't think there's anyone else that like just you know with Henry. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, I think the rest of them were all, all Filipino. Yeah, they? they were all Filipinos. Yeah. We yeah. grew up. We grew up Filipino. Like an hell. Yes. See, Henry, we grew up Filipino. Yeah, yeah, people, shit, yeah. Yeah, people look at me and go, "How?" I go, "Well, just was." Yeah, it's just a multicultural. Yeah, yeah. Isn't the way it should have been, and yeah. still be. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure it is for most of it. But yeah, yeah, and that's, yeah, that's, that's just yeah. very fortunate. Mm. Yeah. So then, yeah, met sure, and then we've been. T- yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's. It. I always sometimes I feel like it's a. It sounds silly, but like a, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, a, a pro, like a product product of circumstance because when I um when I first met Brian because it was more just. Hanging out outside his um, kitchen window whilst he was playing karate car, and his dad said, "Let him inside, God damn it!" <laughs> and then we were friends. I think from that point, the same. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Yeah. I'll talk to him about that one day. I'll give him on, uh, <laughs> give him on the podcast. Come on, Bryce. So, yeah. <laughs> so in high school, like you, you quite we. This ADHD thing got me going, man. Because yeah. like, because when you mentioned it, like I'm actually gonna get diagnosed. I'm going through the the process, the assessment, yep. the assessment. So at the end of the end of June, I've um, got an assessment. Okay. So I've already done like some one of the questionnaires that you actually yeah for proper assessment forms. Yep. But I'm sitting down with somebody to actually diagnose because there's an element of me that has uh, my attention span with a lot of things. Like I, you know, I've engaged in doing courses and all that in my in you know past four or five years now. And but and fortunate enough to pass, but at the same time the retention of the information at the same time is kind of like, you, you know, you only retain a certain amount of it. Yeah, party, you just goes, oh, fuck. What do you do? Yeah. So yeah, ah, oh, that's pretty full on. So yeah, and I think even back in high school, like we'll leading to the high school side of things, it's just, yeah, you know, I'm fortunate that you have passed. You know, done the whole VCE, but I don't think my attention span was always there because I'm still, yeah, I was kind of just very. Always felt off the rails too. Yeah. Very emotional with a lot of things. <clears throat> but you always were emotional. You always, yeah, were, yeah. You always, 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 always had hard on your sleeve. I, I, yeah, I always. still do. Yeah, and that's, so, yeah. that's that's what we all love about you. Yeah. You change. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I guess like, and again, it's not easy to show emotion in any circumstance. Yeah, hundred percent. Right? But yeah. you, for you, it came easy. Mm-hmm. Like, and that was that was to me that was that was an eye opener. That was brilliant. Yeah, yeah, like I knew oh, thanks, back man. then. Yeah. But I look at it now, I'm thinking, holy crap! Yeah. You were like already in touch on stuff that people can't even do now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. And so, thanks, yeah, no no, 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 it's just it, yeah, it's, it's what we're talking yeah. about. I fucking hate it sometimes, but yeah. But what you just, I, I guess, okay. Why? Why? Go. Sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> it's, it's like I mean, but it's it's just who you are. 
Yeah. And like, if it works for you, you don't need to change it. You just need to learn how to adapt, I guess. Yeah, just deal with stuff though. But like, the, yeah. I think that in most recent times, that's, that's what it's been about as well. Yeah. Like, it's my, my inaction as opposed to taking action yeah. has resulted in the emotional side of things taking over a little bit too much. So, and that's why there's kind of like, you know, for the amount of time that I, I'll spend just online browsing and doing absolutely nothing, taking advice of other people and not doing anything. Yeah. It has made me realize that, fuck, I could be sitting here doing this right now, yeah. realizing that yeah. I could be reaching out to, you know, yeah. someone else in a similar situation, which is, yeah. you know, an important thing. I think it's an important thing too. And I, yeah, and it, it's, it's another hobby. It's another interest. And it's another yeah. one. It's just going back to how we were brought up, the, the moral compass of how, you know, I, my dad was into, had his hobbies with yeah. model, model trains and he's, 75 and he, yeah. he's still building yeah. model trains yeah. in the room that I grew up in, you know, like, and that's awesome. That's just awesome. You've got to find something. So yeah, a lot of people just don't so, do that. So you were going to touch on anxiety there because what you talk about overwhelming is what you mean by is anxiety, right? Yeah, hundred percent. Anxiety. Yeah. yeah. Anxiety is, is yeah. it's a, it's a very real thing. Yeah. 100%. And it's, it's affected jobs too. It's affected, yeah. um, yeah. like my, as I said, like it, it's, it's bizarre in when I, when I mention it, cause it's like. I think of the past three jobs, like I was, I was building computers, highly anxious job, combination of these standard computers. So I know where you were. Yeah. Yeah. yeah standard computers. So it was like yeah, the dynamics there were very, uh, good, you know, good and bad. You know, the reason why you stay there for as long as you do in any, any job, but a lot of toxicity as well yeah. with the way things were done, yeah. in my personal opinion. So if I'm offending anyone that's watching this that I knew that I used to work there, then sorry. Let the truth be told. The way it is. But um, yeah, beyond that, when I, you know, I ended up, you know, uh, well, I did a, done a short stint doing, working in the gym, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, there wasn't much really happening with that. And then I ended up doing the gym equipment, working in the gym equipment store. And the major difference with that was that it was, it was a brother and sister, brother and sister owned company, and they were very passionate about what they did and they were very driven and they brother and sister and even though they you know you had those they had those brief moments when they're at each other even at work you know because that's what siblings do yep. they were extremely goal-driven and proactive and accountable and a lot of that began to just you know i began to absorb a lot of that like mm. as like a bit of a, like a, a sponge and we would have moments where we would sit down and talk about the anxiety or the, the human emotion more about you know, how, how I would do things and what kind of person I am to get a certain job done to make my life more, um, to make me more efficient for them as, a, as an employee, um, but also make me a better person in the end as well. And a lot of what they taught me, I've been able to transfer that to the mental health side of things, like with in terms of the accountability and being able to plan my days more effectively than ever to the point where I can just work pretty much unsupervised. Like I find out where, what client I've got, where I go, and, you know, I'm suddenly knocking on the door of a schizophrenic and saying, hey, what would you like to do today? Is there anything we can help you with? Yeah. And this person's like completely delusional in their presentation and what they want to achieve for the day. But yeah. it just, it works. So, yeah, like the anxiety thing is, it, I think it's, and even, I think now I began to realize it's, it is down to a fear and an inaction of actually doing stuff. As a, you know, because you're sitting there thinking the worst in the worst case scenario in your mind, as opposed to just saying, I've got no fucking choice but to go and do it. You yeah. have a choice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You have, you have a choice. Yeah. But like, instead, put it, put it this way like, if I get a new client and, and they're saying, like, he's, uh, uh yeah, yeah, he's, he's been diagnosed with schizophrenia. He's quite delusional. He's just been out of prison. Uh, we're trying to get him to go and, to send a link and get a Medicare card. So that's the key for the day. Something yep. as simple, yep. mundane yep. that any of us take for take um, that we take for granted. You know what I mean? Yep. And I will, I will rock up to the house and I'll be sitting in the car. I'm thinking this person is going to, you know, what's this person going to be like? Is he going to be like so? You know, person A that I met six months ago, or person B that like you know that I had an interaction with last week. You, you and until that door opens, no, you don't know. Yeah. You have no idea. And then that door opens. And it's just like, ah, yeah. oh, okay, cool. I'm used to this. <laughs> you know, like who would have thought? You just don't know. Yeah. So we don't. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the beauty of it. Yeah. And I think a lot of people just don't understand that. Like a lot of people don't learn it. A lot of people don't want to challenge it. They don't want to 
yeah, that, that's the, that's the key. Like, you've got to take charge of it. You'll take that one step. Yeah. So, so I heard I heard a great quote or analogy today. Mm. Action is the antidote. Action is the antidote. Correct. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. So, is, yeah. inaction is what's going to kill you, right? Mm-hmm. And trying to control every situation is not going to help you. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can't. You have no idea what's going to happen. You have no idea what's going to eventuate. Anything can can occur by taking that action. Yeah. And just doing it. Because if you mm-hmm. go through your story that you just told and saying your whole goal was to get him to do a Medicare card, right? Mm-hmm. And if you failed that day to not not enable him to get the Medicare card, didn't actually fail. You learned what didn't work. Yeah, exactly. So, so you yeah, come back yeah, you're right. the next yeah. day mm-hmm. and try something different. And yeah. eventually, you'll get him to get the Medicare card. Yeah, no, exactly. So action is the answer. Learning, so that's it. Like putting yourself out there, and yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, yeah. and it's not easy because you've got to take that first step, like you said, right? And mm-hmm. it takes courage. It takes a lot of courage. Yeah, but you can breathe, and I find breathing just very pause. Yep, breathe. Take your time. Take you a step. Right you get hundred percent, and yeah. then lean into it. Yeah, and take the action. Then it's just going to help because yeah, there are moments where there is still. Impatience, though I must admit, Beck tells me I'm impatient, <laughs> and sometimes I go a little bit offended by that. But I understand her perspective too, yeah. you know, because there's only so much you can tolerate before you have to sometimes briefly explode to either prove a point or make them get your message out there, yeah. or otherwise you're you're holding it in. Yeah, but so, if, yeah, if you're talking about so, in, I'm going to assume and tell me if I'm wrong, but in your line of work, you're there to serve. That person or those people. Um, yeah. So you have no choice. You need to be patient. Because it's about them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. no. Yeah. yeah, there's yeah, there's 100% that. Yeah. But like every other facet in life as well, like, you, you know, you've got your work hat. Yeah. Where, as you say, you were, and then you've got your home hat. Yeah. Well, and then you've got your friend's hat. And then you've got your mad in public to try and do something hat. You know, there's just that level of impatience sometimes. Like, yeah. we, all, we all get it. We all get it when we're driving. Yeah. At the same time, we all know that. Well, there's no checkered flag at every light. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> no I'm like, and sometimes yeah. you just, if you do the speed limit and keep your distance, then you can actually see the world yeah. much more better than the cars in front of you. So, yeah, I get it. And so, I'm trying, trying to work on that like, exact thing, not this, but it's like, <laughs> yes, the speeding, but it's more like, who cares if someone overtakes you in the way that you didn't want them to overtake you? Or who cares that they're riding up, like, you know, like, yeah. like, <laughs> like, I would, like just, yeah. Let, let them know, but it's yeah. very hard. It's some, yeah, that's it. After yeah, the fourth day, right. after after the fifth day of it, yeah, yeah it's it. It's, it gives you every reason to go. Fuck. I guess that's what so, I'm yeah. after driving a taxi or an Uber. Yeah, nah, no way, man. <laughs> <laughs> Screw that. Yeah, they need bull bars back on cars, I reckon. But anyway, but yeah, You've got a nudge, bro. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> you should give me a stand. <laughs> it's a nudge. <laughs> oh, crazy. Because you're you um like yeah, beyond high school, you you went. You, did you go straight to GE? Were you no, like, no, no. So after high school, oh, oh, that's actually, yeah. Well, I was there. Was there. <laughs> yeah, 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 sorry. Well, again, so uh, that 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 so that job started during high school. Yeah, thing was like close to is year twelve. So it was mm-hmm. I got the job year twelve, and then yeah. basically that job helped me get to university, like TAFE and university. So I was yeah, so three, yeah. like six years, that job. Yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah that was that was an awesome. Yeah, because yeah, we had a little stint at it too, didn't we? Well, I brought most people in. <laughs> I brought nearly all my, like you, Brian, yeah, yeah. Henry. Uh, I tried doing a backflip. Yeah. <laughs> but that, but that, that was that was yeah. the benefit of like having a good job, you know, building, you know, skill set trust in that and then, you know, Basically became the casual worker leader in that area, and then they see, yeah, you, know, you had an effective well, team right? because the people you yeah. brought on board, even yeah. if you knew them as friends, like yeah. we were able to effectively do the job. Yeah, yeah, mm. and so yeah. yeah, that so did that. Uh, so from high school, did did TAFE. So I don't know why I went to, went to try to study business law, marketing law, and mm. did that for a year in that COVID. Nah, I'm like it. Yeah, okay. And yeah. then went to information technology. So I did that for two years, like that, and then because of the two years got credit going into. Um, going to university, yeah. so yeah, because cool. information systems. So, and this is kind of where my friendship circle evolved. Yeah, because when when I went to when I started TAFE, the technology, the information technology, does it footwear, wasn't it? Because it was uh, Brian, I think Brian, so I don't know. So, I so, so, I yeah. it. so when I went there, I really bizarre. I was with Shirley like already, and then first day I rocked up in in this um in class, and I sat next to this Filipino guy, mm. and just started talk to him, got to know him. Say, oh, yeah, hello. And then, because we normally ask us, so do you, who do you know? And I'm like, oh, Torius. I go, who? 
He goes, oh, surely it's my cousin. I go, bullshit. <laughs> so I, I met Gerald, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Shirley's first cousin, like, <laughs> in university. And then oh, I met, then I met John and then I met Jason. And they've been my university friends for, like, years. And, and we still meet. We yeah, still, crazy. yeah, we still connect once yeah, a Yeah, yeah, Gross. Yeah, we've all just gone our separate ways in terms of, you know, kids, all the kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Gerald's still close because she, he's, like, fat. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, and so like it's just that again, circle of friends grow up, new circle of friends, and it just becomes part of that the nice. ascension and cell that you get. So from that point, was it? How's Shirley going? Is she going all right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> now I have to bathe right now. Like, <laughs> no, but so did um, did university, and then once I graduated, then three months out of that, I started with G. Yeah. yeah, cool. Yeah, that's when my that's when my work actually started. <laughs> yeah, no, fair enough. And you you started like call center wise, and then moved up into the yep. So like a massive leadership. Yeah. So the yeah, the, yeah. the history there is like um, uh, start up the service desk. So mm. it was fortunate enough, Marcus Weiss gave me the first job actually, and it was Chris Labios. See, so this is how so Chris. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, yep, Chris yep, Labios yep. actually got me um, the interview. Yeah, so come here, come at work, and yeah. you know, no worries, I'll come and try it. And so we did, and yeah, yeah, yeah. and then just started from there. Yeah, cool. Uh, yeah. So just had many different. So it's probably there for 18 years. Yeah, wow. Yeah, it's a good stint. But I had different jobs. Yeah. Different roles, different areas, different departments. Yeah. yeah. The one highlight, I guess, working there was I got to travel a lot, uh-huh. but also was on the graduate program. So yeah, the graduate yeah. program is the, is the leadership programs that fast tracks and some of you risk. That's kind of what helped me a lot in doing that. Yeah. And that gave me opportunity to travel six months in Austria and things like that. So, yeah, yeah, we're good. Awesome. Yeah, it was it was a lot. Of, it was really good. Yeah, I'm and very fortunate, and very grateful. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, got a lot of skills from that. Obviously, to, uh, to get yeah, the role yeah. that you're in now, or uh, yeah. So, so the role I mean now, yeah. So again, leadership role. Like so, so where like you, you, I have no idea what, like where my career was going to end up. I knew that I wanted to be technology. Yeah, yeah, I loved, yeah. I loved leading people. Yeah, there are yeah. two things that I knew. Mm-hmm. Um, and then what I what it sort of turned into was. Security, information security or cyber security. I, I grew up in a discipline that's called information security, now it's called cyber. Mm-hmm. Put the names together. Yeah. Mm. And so for the past 21 years, like because of my career now, yeah. point, um, I've been immersed in the domain of information cyber security. So that, that's kind of what my passion and my horse is. And that, that's just yeah, the that, learning curve. Cool, cool. Wouldn't call myself an expert because there's so much to learn, but I know that there's-, there's Yeah, yeah, no, that's good. In that. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, and then leading people, building teams, dynamic teams. So like, mm-hmm. love, I love bringing different people with different things, you know, different aspects and, and ideas and stuff, and then building it together with skill, with skill sets. Yeah. Either they have the skills or they're very curious and they want to learn and, you know, growing that as well. So, and I've been fortunate enough to do a lot of that. And so at the moment, um, working at a company called Angle Finance, which is really- you know, small. So I went from a big corporate to a small kind of dynamic um, financial institution, yeah, uh, non-bank. And then, is it like a brokerage or something? So we work through brokers. Yeah, yeah. So we work through brokers to lend money to customers. Yeah, yeah. S- small sole traders. You know, people that want to buy equipment for the, you know, their own business. Yep. Addresses need equipment. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Office offices need. Yeah. So that's yeah, cool. Kind Thanks of- for clarifying that because, like, I was, as I said, a little bit. I had did have a look in your LinkedIn to. Yeah. To see what you do. Yeah. And I wasn't exactly sure. But like you see brokerage, you're thinking, okay, what is, yeah. Yeah. So we have around 4,000 brokers on our books, which, yep. which will come to us to based on our services and products and then money. Yep. Yeah. Cool, cool. And you're pretty much just part of the back end side of things, making sure. Uh, my official role is head of technology and security, and I lead the workplace team, uh, a cloud team, and security team. Do they get attacked a lot? So, like has has no 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 not gonna would no. <laughs> so, no, 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 no I've been no, say so when I was at GE when, yeah when we say attack, so you're talking about the security aspect of things. we're talking about yeah like so in terms of cyber security yeah. like how do you how does it how do you secure how do we secure how do you secure <laughs> <laughs> um, look it, it's a great question uh, and the the the, the politically mm-hmm. correct response is there's no silver bullet. But there, yeah. there are things there are things you can do mm-hmm. just 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 to make sure that fundamentally, like you got the fundamentals in place. And I talk about the fundamentals a lot, right? Yeah, yeah. And the fundamentals, things like you know, good password hygiene. Yeah, right? yeah two point. Yeah, two part authentication. Type yeah, ma- yeah, yeah. Mul- they call it multi-factor authentication. And, and a lot of this stuff can translate into your personal, like life. Right? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, 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 right? yeah. So when you say there's a big push right now, yeah, so, yeah, there is from the government, right? So the government, mm-hmm. yeah. So and so where I always, so I educate staff, I educate family because they always call me, mm-hmm. and I educate you know friends, yeah, friends. So, and yeah. so when when we talk about password hygiene, 
So the simple things there is, you know, either use a long or complex password. And what they sort of say is, you know, go with a phrase. So take a take a phrase from your favorite book or your favorite movie. Yep, yep. And use that, right? But yep. Try not to use it for every account that you have. Mm. So if you use it for like email, maybe yep. don't use it for your banking password, right? Try to keep okay. it. Yep. Or get a password manager, mm. right? Mm. And I've got a, I've got one that I use, but there are, there are really good ones out there. And you know, Google and Edge, they're all getting their own inbuilt password managers, which are becoming good and strong. But just just be mindful. You know, I have seen those, but I don't, I've never really understood them because I look at the the combinations that they come up with, and I'm like, oh, I won't remember that. I'll, don't have to. I'll, I'll, it, like that's what I mean. I, I don't understand how you can really. How does it? So does, does it always stay the same? Like, yeah, is, yeah, yeah. is it so, something that you have to be synchronized over all your devices to be able to then so look in? So in that, in, in that gives you the security. So, and here's the beauty of where technology sort of ha- has been and is progressing to yeah. is a single account, multiple applications, right? So if you use Edge, or if you use Chrome, so log on Edge after like okay. after yesterday actually. <laughs> so if you use Chrome, if you use Chrome, yeah, 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 yeah. Because right? Edge, I use Edge a lot because we're micro- we do Microsoft. We use a lot of Microsoft technology, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But so if you use, let's, I'll take Edge, but it's it's the same as Chrome. If you use Edge and you use the password manager in Edge, yeah, right, and you log on to all your websites, right, yep. it basically stores the password encrypted in in its password vault. Yep, yep. So when you log on to that same site. Yeah, and it knows who you are. Yeah, it logs on for you. Yeah, cool. So it kind of saves that need to remember it. Yeah, right. And then if and then most applications has a password reset facility if you forget it or if something happens to you. Yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah, I never thought that. So you can you can do that. But if you use a password manager, Mm. those things like I mean like LastPass or or Bitwarden, like these are these are common. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They also store it. They store it in the cloud. So that's kind of like what you got to be trust trustworthy around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then 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 if your phone like your phone dies or like that, normally you can restore it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. But the the thing that I use the most is uh, Apple Face ID, right? And Apple Face ID is integrated to most things that you log on to, mm-hmm. and like PayPal, uh, Pay, 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 PayPal, all those kind of things. Like use. Yeah. And they call that password list. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know where they're going to. So the native technology, like when I talk about iPhone or Android, is getting very good mm-hmm. at helping you stay secure and stay off, you know, authenticated, mm-hmm. right? And and not having to manage or remember multiple passwords, which is kind of the trick, right? Like that. Yeah. No, you're right. I guess it's, yeah, it's pretty much just a way of streamlining the whole process. Yeah. And maybe that's what a lot of people might have fear with because they're thinking that, oh, if, I'm using, I'm trusting in technology and AI to kind of facilitate my security. Yeah, yeah, AI, yeah, another, yeah. another, dif- another, yeah, another, yeah. another dimension, yeah, another dimension. Yeah. But um, that's probably where the fear is too, because there's just no understanding of it. You yeah. don't care. Yep, uh, and, I, it's a fascinating topic. Like, you, it depends where you want to go. Like, so I mean, whether you call it AI or large language models, and like it, it's been around for nearly, yeah. ever, it's been around for years, right? In some yeah. shape, near yeah, form, right? And like. And so, but technology progressively changes all the time. And what we forget, or what, what I'm assuming some people forget is like, you know, we, we were talking about this up before, VHS. My kids don't know what a VHS is. It's gone. Yeah. Yeah. They don't even know what a CD is. It's yeah. gone, right? Like all that stuff that used to exist in the past is changing. Yeah. That's because of progress, right? Yeah. Like, I don't know if, like, I didn't grow up with this, but I keep being told the stories of, we used to have people that used to run elevators manually. Belt hops, like they used to. Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Now it's all automated. Yeah, like it, you don't. Yeah, and then we used to have back in the, the telephony age, like people you used to have the switchboard operators. Mm. You don't have that anymore. Yeah, that's crazy. It, it, it's just mind blowing. Mind blowing. It really is. Yeah, and it's yeah. only going to get faster and, mm-hmm. and much more, um, much more intuitive, much more intellectual. Yeah, yeah. So it, it yeah, and then like there, there's there's upsides and downsides to any progress with technology. How you use it? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. Yeah, I guess it's just a, yeah because there's such a massive push for yeah, you know, you know, identity theft and stuff like that. You know, yeah, people you know suffering unfortunately because they're just not yeah. well educated or well informed and and unfortunately again in in that space like there are certain things as it as a, as a, as a country we could do to to sort of you know simplify that problem. Mm. Like, but and 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 data and identity is probably one of those. Yeah, and it's as simple as like you know, if when you go when you get a credit card or you get a home loan, anything like that, right? You've got to provide hundred point check of ID, right? Like mm. you've got to provide that, right? Yeah. And then legislation and law dictates in certain circumstances that the organisation has to retain that information. Who? Why? You've already got the loan. I know who you are. 
Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. but they're the debates you have to have at yeah. national and country. Because they're, they're potentially like leaving your information open for it to be potentially hacked and, uh, and, st- and stolen. Correct. I, well, stolen so there's, there's, there's the yeah. first part of I did. Why, did, yeah, why do we need to let them hold that information for, for as long as they do mm-hmm. like and retain it? And if they do, make sure it's super secure, which yeah. they don't always do because they forget about it and they've got like tons of it. Yeah. And then the second part is how are they securing it that Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is, it's, it's not easy. It's, yeah. I can tell you another organization I've worked for and in, it's it's not easy. But yeah. like it's and it's different for different orgs and different industries. Yeah, yeah. like there's some very opportunistic people out there that want to try and get into that information too. Yeah. Clearly, yeah, so, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it it only takes one slip up, one click on an email, and like one vulnerability or one exploit. And yeah, mm-hmm. but it it is it is extremely sad when I read stories about you know retirees and. Well, hundred yeah, percent. Yeah, they lose everything. Yeah, and so they respond to all the email. Correct. Yeah, 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 it's sad. And so the, you know, the darker side of AI is because it's progressively pushing technologies to the boundaries where they've been before, and and you can and you can start using it to mimic people's voices, you know, replicate their image, mm-hmm. like to the point where it becomes like for like. Yeah, photo. Yep, yep, yep. Or, or, or voice. Oh, you yeah, yeah. like there has been, um, there's been. Uh, samples in industry where that technology has been used to oh. you know extort and yeah, well. yeah so it already yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah to the point where there was one story that i was reading where a team's meeting was happening and somehow like uh, a the cfo injected himself in this team meeting so he was able to join and it wasn't the cfo it was a ai version of the cfo wow. that told the finance person on the call to transfer money immediately because we need to do it Twenty six million dollars. That's a buy off. Yeah. Holy yeah, God. yeah. Like this like these are articles yeah. that I've been reading. Yeah. So it's just different elements of like securing the apps you're using and securing it, it is multi multi dimensional. Yeah. Authentication, logins. Yeah, yeah. Multi dimensional. Yeah, wow. But as yeah. as an individual, as a person, like just it's just the good hygiene stuff that you you, you can do and shouldn't mm-hmm. do. Yeah, and then and then learn about the services in case you are impacted. Yeah, yeah. Like ID care, and your bank will tell you that you've got these services that you can subscribe to. And yeah, yeah. do you think um, like there's there's still that handful of the population that likes to go to banks to line up and do stuff? Do you think oh, that's yeah, going to be around for a very long time? Well, because there's still they're like they're kind of pushing that a lot of services go online. So, I, but there's still those like our parents, for example. Yeah, I, I'm trying to think like. And I can I probably get the bank wrong, but there was a bank just recently. And they said they closed down all their branches, all of them, all all their branches. Like, oh wow, yeah, yeah. So I can't again. I don't want to. I don't want to quote the bank, but I just yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, but there was a, there was a bank that just recently said I'm going to close down all the branches. And so, what that does is it either pushing as the corner of their market, doesn't it? Really, in some ways, it pushes you one. It pushes you online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then what? It, not only does it push that you know, individual online, you'll then probably push the the workings of that to people and their family that know how to use it. Right, like. You know, it's so like I know my mum helps administer my grandparents' accounts because it's all online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So demographically, yeah, I think there's still a lot of people that like the bricks and mortars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's probably and they probably just feel safer for the fact that they're dealing with a human being as opposed to technology. Yeah, it's interesting that how bricks and mortars because, like again, I get told like so you know cybercrime as opposed to physical crime. Back in the day when the banks and the bricks and mortars when they're holding cash. Mm-hmm. You know, tellers would have guns. Yeah, like, yeah. Thought, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's how they used to get the cash. But now, because yeah. of technology, you don't have to be in those bricks. That the the, you know, the bridge, mm-hmm. you yeah. can do it online. Yeah, and most people, are, and you can do it on scale. Yeah, yeah. Like you can email, like you you send a million emails, right? mm-hmm. and you only need like hundred thousand of those to click, and you'll be successful. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. like that's, that's they it. work on numbers. They just go on their scam list, whatever yeah. that you're given. Yeah, because yeah. that's one thing they do, isn't it? Like with the scammers online, they'll they'll spend. Two or three hundred dollars to get a list of stolen names and identity, like yeah. so, I like, information at all. Yeah. Just going by what I've said. No, no, no. Why? You, so you're on. So what, but it's just so, like yeah, they get that info, and they get a couple of clicks, yeah. and then suddenly like yeah. yeah. So in industry term mm-hmm. is in in the cyber th- space, they, there's a there's a there's a mob called like initial access brokers. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. What do initial access brokers do, and all they do is compromise accounts. And yeah. They, anywhere. Anyway, they, yeah, yeah. and they'll put them on the dark web to sell. Yeah, and then other groups will buy those accounts, yep. and 
depending on if it's an email, if it's a password, if it's a cookie session, cookie like cookie session, mm-hmm. it, depending on the, the the attributes it has and the successful access it has, the price of it goes up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you're you're like if you got an email, maybe like a dollar. If you've got mm-hmm. an email or password, maybe twenty bucks. If you've got an email password, active session cookie, maybe fifty bucks. Yeah. Well, so you measure that. Like like that's the business model. These. Yeah, yeah. The cyber and then they just cipher through that information yeah. to find what's yeah. valuable for yeah. them to work on, and then yeah. they get contacted by yeah, yeah someone's like, yeah, ah, right, man. So yeah. is it business in itself? Watch sixty minutes now and then, because <laughs> oh, I've, I've watched a few, but even online, there, uh, there's a grouse. I can't remember his name or anything, but I was even just watching some of his stuff yesterday. But he he hacks a dude's, you know, hacks a, a hacker's PC. Yeah, and deletes all his information, all his photos and passwords, yeah. and all the, yeah. all of his. Yeah. Previous client stolen information just deletes two hundred gig worth of info to get him offline. Yeah, and it's just like that is fantastic. Yeah. That's amazing. That just needs to happen more. Yep. Yeah. You know. So if you want an Australian podcast that I religiously follow, it's called Risky Business. Patrick Gray. Mm-hmm. Um, and just once a week he releases like the whole news that happens in the week. Yep. And it's like maybe an hour long. Less. Yeah. Yep. It's just it's a good past just good podcast. It. It's probably a little in depth and a little note on the side of technical, but they give you the broad brush of everything. Yeah, no, good, good. Oh, that'd be cool. I'll just check it out. So, where do you think you used to fit in during high school? Nerds, jocks, middle ground, all around guy. Wasn't a nerd. It wasn't a jock. So, it wasn't very sporty. I mean, we played sport, but it wasn't sporty. What is there another category? I have no idea. I don't know what <laughs> You're too indoctrinated about whatever Americans put. Oh yeah, is that where it comes from? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so I think. Look, I think. I think we were the middle ground, to be honest. Our group. Yeah. I think we were kind of like we we were the group that never, you know, extremely rare was there any incident, and it was never anything serious. Yeah. And for our group, and yet, yes. and yet, yeah, our group. Just that's more what I'm talking about. And it's more like we just gravitated towards that and. It was fun. It was always yeah. good. And yeah, yeah. kind of carried, was, kind of carried each other through, really. We <laughs> did, which was to, to which yeah. why we remained friends to this day. But I was just trying to think like, it's an interesting question we've seen where did you kind of sit between nerds, jocks? I know it's the US yeah, yeah, yeah. presentation, but I think in it was more um, sort of which group did you associate with? I think when we were growing up. Mm. And so there were definitely groups, and it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily kind of cultural groups, but yeah, yeah, yeah. you'd have. Yeah different groups of people s- sticking together, right? And Yeah. And, like, it, it was fascinating to watch that. Like, now looking back at it and growing up and understanding, like, the, the, and so... Yeah, yeah, because, like, our, our year level in its entirety, yeah. like, it was one of those year levels yeah. where there was little incident. Or maybe there was, yeah. but I never really took any notice of it. Yeah. I found that we got along quite well, and I think it was even a testament to when we had our high school reunion 10, 15 yeah. years afterwards yeah. with how many people actually rocked up. Yes, so that's that's the thing that's bummed me out. So, yeah, but as I said, like I think we were in kind of the, the middle ground with a lot of things. Like we, you know, got along with anyone and everyone. Yeah. But at the same time, we kind of knew where our place was and just stuck to it. And yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, it was, it was small, it wasn't big, but it was good. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I agree. So again, yeah, like I think we didn't get up too much mischief. I was sometimes I was an asshole, like to some people or teachers, I should say, growing up. Yeah, same. Yeah, yeah. 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 But. I, I will give a shout out to Mr. O'Brien. Do you remember Mr. O'Brien, math teacher, year 10? You know, problem. Yeah. 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 And it was because of him that I kind of went, like literally, I remember the, I remember the conversation on a parent teacher interview with my mum. He sat me down, math teacher, and he goes, Your son, right? He had this, he had this path. This way, like you go this way, and he was in for trouble. This way, and he's like, head in a good way. He goes, Your son, just go this way. I looked at him and went, <laughs> like and, and like that conversation was good because I didn't I, I, I knew that I was heading the other way mm. but I didn't know what it meant until he yeah. told me right and then you remember it was the house yeah Mr. Yeah, 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 yeah he was the other teacher that influenced me a lot like yeah, he, just, yeah. he would say it how it is keep it on straight and narrow mm. and you would you know and you would you know stay in line you would you know yeah yeah be near yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so to speak yeah and yeah, then good stuff man yeah. the, and then yeah so there's th- those two teachers probably had the most and Mr. Kagi, you remember Mr. Kagi? Yeah, but I never had him as a, as a teacher yeah. though. Yeah. So Mr. Yeah. Kagi, for, for whatever reason, was also awesome. And Mrs. Cows, who remember Mrs. Cows? Yeah, I did. I reckon Israel had. I had. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, but Mr. Kagi, because of economics. Yeah. 
I had no idea how I got an A or a B. You know, I had no idea. I just, <laughs> I just did. I don't know. It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Cool work. Unreal. Yeah, that, that was. Yeah, because that's the thing. Yeah, yeah, we're schooling a lot. So my eyes were a bit watery. I'm not actually crying. Not yet. Anyway, probably. So yeah, we haven't had stuff. Uh, hey, we haven't had the hard stuff yet. Hey, haven't had stuff. <laughs> oh, we'll be going down there, are we? I have no idea. It depends on your question. Yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah, life in general. Yeah, but I didn't. Yeah, I, I didn't like. I just yeah. uh, high school was okay. For me. Like, meeting the people was great, but it wasn't like I wouldn't say it was the best the experience of my life. For my, you know, for like yeah, yeah I, I, people talk about high school a lot, and I draw a blank. I must admit, like with um those trauma. Deep, trauma. those <laughs> trauma. Uh, trauma. That's bitch. trauma. I, I don't know. Yeah, I have my own issues as well. Like you know, some you know some things and. You know, I'm more just the, the coming of age, and I think, like as you saw, I, you, know, you probably never took any major notes, but I was very self conscious about my appearance in terms of the weight, um, the pimples, acne, just covered head to toe, yeah. and that really fucked with my self esteem yeah. a lot to the point where it just closed up. Yeah. Believe it or not, okay, is extroverted, and stupid, and you know, funny as it was back in the day, yeah. and even still now in some ways, but it was just like it really. Yeah, that, that, that consumed a lot of me in the later years of high school from, yeah. Yeah, yeah. say, nine through the year 12. Yeah. But, you but know. That's understandable because kids are fucking yeah. mean. Yeah. yeah and but it wasn't so much of that. Like, no, no one was really picky. I wasn't really picked on yeah. for any of that at all. But it was just more how I felt that I would be perceived as being ugly, yeah. basically. That's how I felt. Yeah, based and on the fucking mean kids. Hey, based on the kids that'll pick on you. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Like, but yeah, yeah, just, yeah, I just kept probably just kept it myself, but it felt yeah. safe being with you guys. Yeah, in that in that yeah. as well. So yeah, because you said we pick on you anyways. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we all know our place. So. Correct. Yeah. 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 yeah, and yeah, and that, that's it. Yeah, and even back then, like we would have gatherings, and as you said, I would be the emotional one. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. So fuck it, like bad luck. Yeah. I don't know, but that, that, that was yeah. Like, it's, it's yeah. Being sensitive, or maybe you're just a little bit too in touch, too, or you can't be in touch too soon. It's just the way you are, like you, you, you know, just connected in some way. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, yeah. Funny stuff. I wish I made better decisions with jobs and all that though. Well, like you said, so leaving high school and doing the studying, but I never actually did. So just got out there and continued to. Work. But you never stopped doing something. Yeah, I was always doing something. So, so that's, that's okay. It. But it's better now. Mm. But uh, I mean, like it's different. I, different for everyone in that respect on what choices you make and how you get to where you need to get to. Yeah, exactly. So you may not be doing this right now if you did different decisions. Yeah. Exactly. It's, you may not be yeah. Rebecca mm-hmm. if you did different decisions, right? Exactly. Yeah. So it's kind of like hindsight. I just yeah. I think you just the multiverse, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, multiverse is another great conversation. <laughs> just kind of helps think like the what do another me here, <laughs> us doing another thing. Uh, have they got hair? Yeah, probably. It's stupid. It's probably got the afro <laughs> going. So, yeah, right. On, on that topic of high school, still, like any any major regrets with high school? No, oh, any regrets? Yeah, no, I do. <laughs> no, no. I, I think I could have been a little bit more respectful to teachers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think in hindsight, I they got enough to deal with. And what's probably driving that, um, you know, re- retrospective, is the pandemic and being teachers to my kids. Yeah, okay. Right? And yeah. that was extremely hard. And then I'm thinking yeah. about how much of an asshole I was in class yeah. and compounded by other people giving teachers. Like, it's just it's probably stink. No way. Yeah. How, like, you wonder why teachers are asking for more pay. Because yeah. they're entitled to much more. <laughs> <laughs> With idiots like me, I was back right there, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I probably could have been a lot more respectful in that in that way Yeah, yeah. teachers. I agree. I remember I caught up with um, Mr. Wood. Oh, yes. Well, yeah. Come here, Philip Philipwood, first name. Yep. But yeah, like it was just a Bayfit Leisure Centre one year, and like coming out of there, and I'm like, Mister Wood, he's like recognised me straight away. And I, the first thing that came out of my mouth was, "I'm sorry for being a shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry for being a shit in high school." Yeah, today. I'm sure they get. Well, I was. Yeah, but you know, like it, you feel better as a human being, well, just course. being confident to stand in front of him yeah. and say, "Look, you know, I'm yeah. sorry for being an idiot." And you know. Won't have it again. Well, but you know what I mean. Just so, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But um, oh hey, I wonder how teachers go these days. Like it, it must be harder. I oh, would. Would you reckon it would be harder? Like because of the whole social media context and yeah, yeah. So the element of them, you know, kids 
assuming, presuming they have more rights or... Yeah. yeah. I, I think or look, I, I think there are different challenges that teachers face these days than we had back then. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'd say social media would be one of those. And social media because, like, you know, the schools use social media to communicate with parents. Mm. Kids use social media to do certain things too. So, like, yeah. there's a balance. I think there's a lot more... Um, how do I put it? There's probably a lot more. There, there are a lot of different topics being discussed that we never had growing up. Mm. So, like, you know, again, I'm not, I don't want to get into too much of the, the cancel culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too movement. Yeah, yeah same, uh, same. Gender diversity, like Very gender different, but yep. neutral, like all that kind. Of, it just is completely yep. different dimension. And they, so they have a lot of different things to deal with. That mm. their curriculum or the the way they're taught to teach is probably doesn't deal with it just yet, right? Like, how do you do that? Like, then you got the government saying, you know. Um, you know, I, I'm going to start teaching sex ed and how to, you know, deal with all this kind of stuff. And, you know, religiously, sometimes people don't want to, de- to deal with that, right? So, like, it's, it's, I don't know, I think we've got a lot of different challenges than we had back then growing up. Yeah. Yeah. So, again, I, is it is it harder? I think it's different. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot more, you know, different different dynamics of, you know, immigrants coming into the country as well. Yeah. You know, like when we were growing up, it was predominantly what, you know, Islander, Vietnamese, Mm. Kind of people, you know, Turkish, yeah, yeah, or like Filipino, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, Asian. Now it's like it's it's different. It's like probably more Sudanese and you know African kind of culture coming yeah. in, and so that again, different different dimen- dimension, different dynamics in all that. Yeah, and, yeah, and the way they're getting taught and how they could teach, you know, how they're teaching. Exactly, it comes back to I guess to that moral compass really as well with a lot of acceptance with a lot of that stuff too. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's, I know what you mean, like the the cancel culture and. It's uh, it's 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 very different. Like I would, I think it would be extremely confused, to be honest, as a student or a kid going growing up. Yeah, like, it's just trying to work out what's what to accept. Like I think just trying to be a decent human is in some ways the answer. But even then, it's more of a generic response to mm-hmm. a lot of what issues could be resolved over the past thousand years. Yeah, as well. <laughs> I think. I don't know. Do I use the word over politically correctness? Because like yeah, when, yeah, we, when we were yeah. growing up, like a lot of we 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 grew up on so such good humor and you know watching things that like just made you laugh. Which yeah. Today you would probably say, well, that's not politically correct anymore. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So like you think, well, holy, where, where did the, where did that moral compass or sense of humor go? Mm-hmm. Like. Mm-hmm. And and again, it's it's really hard to to draw those boundaries now anymore because yeah yeah you can't openly like or you can't in a public forum because you just don't know how you're going to offend anyone. Oh yeah yeah yeah. So you got yeah. to be mindful. No, you're right. Yeah, like a lot of the stuff we could, you know, the humor. You look back on it when you when you even attempt to watch something that we used to watch that was you know slapstick comedy or something. Yeah. It's, it's just it's pretty bad in the sense that it's just not funny anymore. <laughs> but it's like it it does hit a call because there's the type of uh, themes that they they were involved they're usually based around someone else, someone else's uh, yeah, someone else's trauma. Where they're, uh, they're someone they're, else's yeah, they're, they're diverse culture. culture. Yeah, yep. so they're yeah. kind of like they're getting picked on. Disability. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah, yeah. yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, but still, we understood the context of the the comedy side of things and being able to take take the piss on, take the piss out of. We knew someone else. Laugh and we knew, and it. it was just like, yeah, we understand it, and. There's still pockets of that as well, but I think a lot of comedians are still trying to push those boundaries, but they're getting a lot of pushback as well, mm. which is, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just, you know. That's why Netflix is here. Unfortunately, yeah. yeah. That's it. You have the option to turn on, you click off, you should, you've been on, you've yeah, just but, you're offended. But the fact that the material is out there, like, it doesn't matter. It's more shock now. Yeah. It's more of a shock value. Like, it, it, yeah. you know, a lot of people, we all, most of us think it, who's actually going to say it? Yeah. Well, the comedian. Comedians will. Yeah. Yeah. That's why they. That's why we need them. <laughs> that's why they need to be around. So now that's it's um, yeah. It's not. Uh, it's 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 very uncool. But do you think even leaving high school, you will prepare for the real world as well? Or uh, I have no idea. <laughs> like hard, hard question because like I remember back in in the high school days. So we're all finished year ten. Well, close to finishing it, and then the big speeches happen. They're like, you know, like this is the next two years of your life are they're going to be the biggest, hmm. and they're going to determine if you 
want to study for university or go out and get a job in a career and stuff like that. And it was kind of, I remember year 11 and 12, even though I was very similar to yourself, like I applied myself enough to uh, get my VCE, but I never, I didn't excel the way I, you know, I really should have, yeah. you know, if I, if I was committed and focused and didn't have potential ADHD like yourself. But, um, yeah, one of those things is, as well, like they made, they, they started the whole element of you are an independent adult in, in year 11 and 12 and your teachers are there to like facilitate you know, your classes and your education. But at the same time, it's up to you to really get as much information as you can from them and external sources as well. So like the preparedness of life kind of started from that point for a lot of people. So yeah. Do you think you were prepared enough to kind of move on from from the whole high school side of things? And so I think look, s- schooling in general, I'm always going to encourage education. Like I- any education is good education, but I think you know that they may they may need to rethink on how st- what is taught in schools in order to adapt for what's coming or what's changing. Yeah, I think that's probably something yeah they yeah. Gone. So the the value for me in high school, even primary school, was making friends. Yeah, and friends that would help me for whatever situation I got into once I left high school. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And, you know, English, maths, economics, those core things, sport, all helped ground me and give me, you know, the foundation. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe American history didn't really need it. Because, <laughs> yeah, like, well, yeah, same. We're, we're Israel. Like, yeah. you know, but, but, you know, you, but again, it's so, so much about maybe content, but applying yourself, learning it, retaining yeah, the information yeah. and going. So, the, the underlying message is, yeah, what's, yes, what's in, the, in the teaching, yeah. Knowing, knowing what I know now and then looking at what they, you know, from a high school perspective and university perspective, I think there, there needs to be a lot more, like, balance between academic and, pra- you know, practical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your hands on. Yep. Um, there probably needs to be a little bit more around, yeah, I, I would say kind of leadership as well as, you know, um, uh, working, you know, you know, collaboration work and mm. projects and things like that. Yeah. It, it really depends what industry you're going to, right? Like it, it varies, right? So yeah, but it still is a very strong element. Yeah, yeah. It, it you have to yeah, interact with other human yeah, beings. Teamwork, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You get those personal skills, communication yeah. skills, yep. presentation skills, like yeah. th- that, that sort of stuff is probably missing to an yeah. extent. Yeah. But you would do, you would do, a, you would do an essay or you do a presentation, like yeah, you yeah. Got, you got to the, or you'd read a book. Which kind of value now, not back then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, again, it, it probably could. Um, no, but I think you're absolutely right there because, like, that's this is the element of the, the social media and being the online, constantly connected, but not connected to a human. So, so, yep. so, so you know, yeah. and that's why there's a lot of. I see there's a lot of social skills that just aren't there yeah. from those you know similar to our age when we were going through the same type of year. You know, yeah. well, there's no real drive. Because all the information is there, ready to yeah. go. So yeah. I think the one other big thing schools in general could take away, you know, and again, it, it's a resource thing. It's like the, if they if they can understand how the individual learns, because everyone learns different. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yep. Not, yep. Not everyone is a classroom person. Yeah. Not everyone is a you know stand up speaking. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. If they learn how yeah, someone's more auditorial, someone's more yeah. visual, someone yeah. more hands on, then they can. Is is three just couple. I can't remember the name of the category. You probably know them, but mm. it's always said them. Yeah, I know. That's the song leading. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. come on, you know this but, shit. Hey, no, but, 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 no, no, you're yeah, in the right area, right? Yeah. But it's like that. Then, then they could tailor the learning, and then they might have a better chance. Exactly. Yeah. Any. Yep. Yep. The information. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Retaining the info and essentially finding something that kind of leads them into that yep. the same field. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's it. Do you, do you, have you had situations like that with your your girls going through school, like? Is that what you have you identified that through them or just in general? Uh, in terms of the way they learn, yeah. Um, so like I'm gonna say, I'm not asking if they had any issues, but it's more like no, 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 no. So is there like um, yeah, the way that they're being educated is? Do you believe that they could this the education system could be doing better or the schooling so, doing better? So the one thing, and again, the one thing I think the schools are like that I'm looking at now, as opposed to what happened when we were after high school, is the information sharing is amazing now. Mm-hmm. So for, to the example, even in primary school, everything is is application driven. So there's an app in primary school, an app in high school, and the information like they tell us nearly every day 
what's mm-hmm. happening. Like, mm-hmm. that this worked you. Yeah. Like, and so that helps the parent understand what the child is doing, yeah. what they're going through. And it, like me, sure, they have these conversations and we share the information all the time. And then we understand why they might be stressed when they come home, right? Yeah, yeah. So like, you know, growing up and when we were stressed about all this homework, our parents probably didn't know what the hell we're talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like just that yeah. alone, having the understanding of when their assignment's due, what their timetable is, it's all transparent. You can help mm-hmm. your kids through yeah. like things. But it also empowers them mm-hmm. to structure their day and time, yeah, yeah, all that yeah, sort of stuff. Time and you've written yeah. everything on top of it. Yeah, and then yeah. like, again, the flip side to having a phone, social media is now they can connect and talk about work mm-hmm. like straight away. They yeah. can commu- They can have like th- three or four way calls doing an assignment yeah, on, a, yeah. on a Zoom call or a Teams yeah. call, right? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. none of that was around when we were there. We'd have yeah, to right. rock up to the house with like bags and everything to do the homework. <laughs> like, but come that, to the kitchen table. Yeah, there, just yeah. forget about it. Yeah, that, that is right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty yeah. powerful and useful yeah. and helpful. Like and stuff yeah. they will need to learn when they get into work, mm-hmm. like a work context, right? So. So from that perspective, I think it's good. I think that's that's something that's changed from when we were growing up and when we were doing high school. Um, they definitely take after Shirley in terms of academics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very astute. Like they like to learn. They like to they like to do the work and do do it well. So that, yeah, that's also awesome. yeah. yeah. Don't discredit yourself. No, no. I just I say that distinctly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I say that distinctly. No, yes. That's because <laughs> you sometimes do that too. You just go no, you just, no. Let's take care of it. Yeah, you do. <laughs> That, yeah. uh, Proud, yeah. Proudest moment as a teen, when I got my black and as an adult, when I got my black belt, that was pretty. Uh, yeah, that was pretty. I, I enjoyed that. When I when I'm what age? I mean, it was twelve or thirteen. Yep, yeah, cool, yeah, cool. I think it was around then. Nice. Uh, when I met Shirley, yeah. I had to say that. Nah, yeah. no, that was who when, when I did. Um, nice. I mean, that, that were my moments. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, How, yeah. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, that, those, and then high school specifically. I, I, I don't know how, I don't know why, but like, at the, when we were graduating, and we had that, that like end of year celebration, and I had the afro and all that kind of stuff coming in, and then the awards. I had no idea why I got like with those awards. Like that, that still surprises me today. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it was like a testament of who you are. You know what I mean? Like you, I, 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 I identified that. Like you were just very driven. You were very. Well, to me, yeah, you seem focused and driven, and better chance of success than than most. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, like yeah. yeah. So be proud of it. I am. So yeah, yeah. but humbled is the word. I yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Ah, it's good. Did we hang out in primary school? I don't think we did. So I think our parents did more. Eh? My my memory, no, my memory was not so much at school, but after school all the time because I'd be at Brian or Dex's and we'd always be hanging out. Like, that's how it was. During the primary school yeah, time? Yeah, yeah. There would be a few times, but probably more when we were grade five, grade six, not so much in the younger. But then definitely in high school, high school would be around all the time. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I remember all that. Yeah, a couple of parties. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've got photos of when you come over to McDonald's or like my garage, we used to have parties. Okay. I remember your 18th at your, at your house. Yeah, it was fine. That was... Freaking hilarious! It was fireworks, but also the birthday cake turned into a food fight. Yeah, it did. Like no one actually yeah. ate. No one actually ate no, the cake. Like, you know, it was just bumless. My grandma. Yeah, she just can't. <laughs> so upset. Did they make it? Did they or? Well, they just can't remember. It was really important, but she wanted to taste it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was a crack up. At the time, yeah. Then you got um, yeah, the, I don't know whose who's party. What? Yeah, you you were going to mention it. The party of uh, I don't know. Me trying yeah. um. <laughs> Marijuana and alcohol at the same I think, time. I think, well, I think the word we use is we're experimenting with some stuff. And yeah. I think you we were young. did not know how to handle the the effect of what you took. That's it. And ended up in the bathtub and something around wanting an ambulance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then parties only got better from that point. Yeah. Brian was like, yeah, I'm yelling out, call an ambulance. Pretty much. So I was vomiting in the bath and then Brian was upset. But we did an like, But we used to. And I called down on my hands and knees into the other room, I think, didn't I? Yeah. I did that. I, I just kind of remember it, that moment. But I was, yeah, it was pretty much like a family gathering too. Wasn't it? Uh, it was sweet. It was sweet. Like, like yeah. <laughs> but it was more, it was more just yeah, the, like us, the teens, and then the kind of young, younger. Yeah, yeah. The, the siblings and brothers and sisters. And yeah. <laughs> and uh, grandkids. Oh, yeah. Holy moly, there was only four of us or five of us that went to that almond garage and we drank some. Oh, that was bad. Yeah, we drank a bit. That was bad. So, yeah, taking a piss and 
the door. Yeah, knocking the, the door toilet. Yep. Uh, hits me on the back of the head and you're on the other side. Apologies for that. Oh, no, because, yeah, you <laughs> smashed the door in. Yeah. Oh, oh good times. <laughs> that was because we drank, we played the worst hand, like card game. Yep. And it was a full bottle of vodka. Yeah. And then orange juice. And in less than an hour, we drank the whole bottle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like never again. Because we also hiked pretty much to the top of Grampians, one of the Before, mountains. So and then we came back and played. And, and pasta and the pasta. Yeah. I vomited all over the um, kitchen. Yeah. And then a uh, kitchen bench. Went through. <laughs> God bless him, right? Yeah. <laughs> Winnie. And he basically, we drove up to the top. And I remember the door. I was opening. I was just vomiting outside. I don't know where you're at. Oh, yeah. oh, oh hack. <laughs> so sick. So, so oh, there you go. Stupid things. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Uh, life-changing experiences. Two of the more recent ones is, you know, getting married and having kids. They're life-changing. Yeah. Um, pandemic, I'd say. And everyone's going to have their own experience, but yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in that was also... Yeah. It was life-changing because work and yeah. being a team, but also family and dealing with... Because it, it changed, like, it changed a few people. Yeah. Right? And... Um, you had to deal with things differently and people had their like, own opinions and you started to see where people's values were very much in that yeah. um, during that pandemic. You had to do homeschooling, which I think is the hardest thing on this planet. Like, yeah, yeah. To extent, like, just, oh, my gosh. Yeah. How, do you, how do you do that and then try to work? And then it was just... Yeah, such an imbalance even through like all the schools in South. Yeah. You know, it's one system, so... Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess my parents divorcing... Who was life changing? That yeah, only in varying degrees of, of life changing. Mm-hmm. Uh, being in a car accident at a very young age was life changing. No, okay. no, yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, I uh, I used to frequent King Island a lot because my uncle used to live there, and me and my yep. cousin Melissa. Remember Melissa, my my cousin, first cousin. Yep. Um, so we were drive. Uh, not me. So my uncle was driving a van, and me and my cousin were at the front. Yeah, she was sitting on my lap. And I was holding it and we were driving through because we had stuff in the back that couldn't fit. Mm. And then as we're driving a van and we're going that fast, the steering wheel snapped. And it just went bang into a mountain and it just started rolling. And then my reaction was, my, like I, I could remember it, vividly see it. My cousin was going out the window because she had no belt on. Yeah. And it was just this, just pulled it back. Yeah, wow. Yeah. And so that was life changing because your, your life literally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it just before you, I guess like, yeah. Yeah. And it was like the side we were on just was all crushed. You know, we weren't like badly damaged, but my uncle just walked away with scratch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing, you know? Yeah, wow. Living in Austria, like living overseas and just not not being able to speak their language mm-hmm. was a less a life lesson. Yeah. Yeah, yeah wow. Yeah. 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 So like, you know, kid coming in from Deer Park, you know, urban slang, <laughs> yeah, bring in moccasins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and 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 like you know, not not really knew what snow was because you, you know, but then going to a country yeah, where yeah. they speak the English is their third or, third or fourth language, huh. and then making your way around that country to the end where, like after six months, I was giving people tours of the country, which was really good. Yeah, I didn't didn't know how to speak language, but yeah, knew yeah. enough words to yeah get by. Yeah, yeah, be. Oh, yeah so that was that was like tradition. That's awesome. So, what stupid mistakes do you make? Even today as an adult. I eat too much. That's a big one. Yeah. Because <laughs> I like my food. Hey. Um, don't make enough time for the family. And uh, right? and uh, no, no. not as enough not as enough as you need. Like yep. Yeah, and not enough time with the wife. Yeah. Because of work can be little talk. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And that's that's conscious choice too sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like I've got to find the right balance. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise it just it won't work out well in the end. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Take a toll. It, it does. It needs to burn yeah. out. Yeah, everything as well. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, get a fix. Get a fix on that. Yeah. Um, but the type of organisation you have as well, there obviously have things in place that you can utilise. They do. They have yeah. like yeah. E- in an EAP services. Yeah, yeah. But it's more around just. I've done that. Done an EAP once. Yeah, I did yeah. drink. Oh, you did the, the phone. You were doing the phone calling, or you called them. No, I called them. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Like five sessions with them. So yeah, yeah. yeah. you had ten sessions, three sessions. Yeah, yeah. During the pandemic. I didn't do it during. I didn't actually just. Well, well, it was back in January this year, actually. Recent. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. And that's through the work you're with today, or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Through your job. So I was just trying to find a balance. Yeah. With, yeah, same thing. It was very much like I felt like I was falling back into 
I like with even though my pre, I'll talk about my previous job with doing the gym installs, and I would yeah. take a lot of what stresses from that or bring really home. And I felt that there was an element of me that was still kind of doing that with this new job, like bring home, trying to cultivate strategies and how I can assist better and so on and so forth. But I found that, um, yeah, speaking to somebody about it was yeah quite effective. Like the service was there, take advantage of it, man. Just just do it. Yeah, because there's only so as you you know, like there's only so much you can talk to about you know talk with about your partner, and that's the thing you want to be able to compartmentize your life and you know when you finish work, you go home. Oh, it's, it's home time now. It's family time. It's everything like that. And sometimes you you know you'll sit there and an hour later from being home, you'll still be talking about. <laughs> You did yeah, an update, very, very so that's going to be a yeah. yeah. It's hard, isn't it? Yeah, like, very hard to leave it at the floor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's how it was a thing. You know, I, know. I used the AP during during pandemic. Yeah, COVID. Like yeah. it was just it was very difficult leading a team yeah. through that time. Yep. Um, and because you're so busy taking care of everyone else, mm. yeah, you, you don't really you don't really see the toll it's taken on you uh, to the point where you know. HR or PNC, you know, people and culture teams are doing the rounds on the leaders to see how they were. Yeah. And so I got in a virtual call with the head of HR and they said, how are you doing? And mm. I just cried. Yeah. I literally, they, because they asked me that question, mm-hmm. something just said, no, nah, you're crying. And I did. And thank goodness for the virtual, because I switched the camera off. <laughs> yeah. But they could still hear me. Yeah. Yeah, so I like, and so what, I guess... And again, just what led to that point was, you know, you're delivering still virtually, you're not meeting anyone or, or you know, meeting on physically, but I had team members working in India, New Zealand, you know, Australia and all that kind of stuff. Mm. And like, like you, you can't tell everyone these kind of things because like they don't understand. But, mm-hmm. you know, the, the individual that was in India, he went back to India during the pandemic because his father needed like a whole bunch of work in hospital. Mm-hmm. And then I get a phone call from him saying, I'm sorry, Jason, but I got to take time off because my father just died in my arms on the way to the hospital mm-hmm. in a taxi. Mm-hmm. How the fuck do you deal with that? Yeah. Like, I just mm-hmm. take the time, go. Mm-hmm. And then this other individual that was working in my team was, you know, was struggling mentally, wife, like all that kind of stuff too. And like, yeah, you you know, I want to be there yeah. for them. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah. But then, then you go home and then you got to, like, you got to, you know, homeschool your kids, do all this, and like that whole thing just, you know. Was, when do you take the cape off? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then, like, and then, or how do you refill your cup? Like, that was hard. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that was, yeah, that was yeah. very hard. And that's kind of when I, so I used the EAP services, had 10 sessions, and then they did get me onto a good book called Developing in Resiliency, right? Blue book, I can't remember who wrote it, but it's got a picture of Umbrella on the front. Mm. Um, it was a very good book that I read that just gave me techniques and stuff to learn on how to deal with it. And I've been kind of on that. So my, my current philosophy or trajectory is around, you know, learning how to build resilience, you know, cultural change, um, you know, you know, so, you know, dealing, dealing with, so adverse adversity or, you know, difficult situations is an opportunity to learn is kind of like that. Yeah. 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 It's easier to say. No, I know what you mean. It's kind of like, yeah, you present it with the situation and you, you'll go through it. Yeah. But not a lot of people give themselves the time to sit, as it was talked about earlier, like take a step back, breathe, yeah. analyze it, take what you can from it, yeah. and move on. Yeah. Because that's essentially what well, it is. It's a choice you have. But the problem, problem is, is people just, you know, go through the situation, hold on to it, and it's there. True. <laughs> and then the same or well, similar situation will happen, and it compounds, it just gets compounding to the point, yeah, yeah, you won't be able to carry it. No. So, yeah. So, no, it's fine move. Yeah, and I think that's, you know, 20 years ago, these services might have been available. We, we weren't even aware of it. But now, as you say, with the advent of technology, that's that technology is there. Yeah. Like the EAPs or councillors yeah. and all that. Even though there's a massive backlog in the system, the services are there. There is something there. Yeah. So yeah. I think the biggest difference back then to now is we as adults or parents or as, you know, adults are being educated just as much as our kids are. Yeah. So back then, we're part of that generation gap we is still accepting of old school and new. Yeah. 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 And back, back then, our parents weren't, mm. didn't really know or didn't really, like they were just trying to make ends meet. Yeah. Let alone reading, yeah. you know, or watching, you know, public, you know. You know, the biggest thing I remember back or the biggest campaign I remember back growing up was the Grim Reaper and Smoking, right? That's kind of what 
back then was a bowling ball. Yeah, yeah, all that yeah, kind of yeah. stuff, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. smoking, stop smoking. Yeah, that was yeah. the biggest yeah. health issue you had. Or AIDS. Yeah, that was the biggest health issue that we had. Yeah. It wasn't mental. The diabetes was kind of yeah. a big thing to But it wasn't mental. mental. It wasn't emotional. Yeah. It wasn't anxiety. None of that was, yeah. like, talked about it at all. Yeah, exactly. Like, like, yeah. But now it's 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 a good thing that it is. And it's, like, you know, even even kids our age, or kids back, sorry, kids my age, like, kids my daughter's age, just to say, yeah, 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 yeah. is yeah. recognising things like that. And I didn't understand the word back yeah, then. Yeah, never younger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is quite. It's quite phenomenal. I must admit, like when how deep rooted some trauma can actually be. Yeah. Because, but you know, of of I mentioned it, but like it's, it's kind of similar. But just as an example of the deep rooted traumas that some people go through. Like I've actually had a client that I worked with that was a transgender. Yep, believe it or not. And was you know going to personal too deeper information, but they when this individual was in their sixties now gone through the full transformation from male to female, mm-hmm. um, self-funded. But even but when they were around the ages three and five, like their um, mother and sister would dress them in women's clothing during the day whilst dad was at work. And then when dad would come home, they'll put him in boys' clothing. This happened for numerous years before the father found out, assaulted the wife, then they essentially, st- then the dad would beat the child, this this. Yeah. Confused child, yeah, and then the mother would, would meet the confused child as well, for all the you know, for everything that's happened, okay. you know, even yeah. though they made that choice, and then for you know, like 40, 50 years in terms of trauma, like this person has had an identity issue resulting in them wanting to transition into you know, uh, yeah, a female for a male, and yeah. I'm that with confidence, yeah. just the deep seated trauma, like we just don't know, do we? Yeah, like how how deep it can be, like, and it's from such a young age. Yep. Yeah, and like you don't know the circumstance, the situation they're in. Oh, uh, so you, yeah, you you just say no. Like you, yeah, you're too busy taking it for face value in a way. Like the person yeah. itself. Like yep. I saw that they presented as a as a female yeah. on on the day, yep. um, and then I was confident enough to ask questions, and they were confident enough to answer those. Yeah, and it was still in the first interaction, and I'm like, oh, this is well, fascinating. It was it was really amazing to think that you know I've been stigmatized by you know by watching all this information about how your perception change how the perception you know my perception of the, how this work environment yeah. now that we're currently growing up in you know even though this is only one person i've interacted with in this situation but to think that a lot of it is based on trauma mm-hmm. that, that individual's parents were better educated the outcome could have been different 100 percent, yeah because mm-hmm. that's the length that i was making around education yeah as we as we draw full close <laughs> what is uh, what's the road ahead look like? Has it changed? Is it on track? What do you what do you want? What do you need? To us? What, 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 uh, what does it look like? Uh, long and black. Put the big line on it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a right? I, I, I yeah, that, that's a great question. I like if if I had, if I could project you know and the universe kind of helps me and the man upstairs looks after us it's going to be like my health is going to be in a better place just physically because like you know not not as training as hard as i used to or exercising so that you know, yeah i uh, may be eating a little bit less but you know food. you have our concerns uh no just carrying extra weight that i don't need to yeah like just that's it just carrying yeah. extra baggage that does has no absolutely no intrinsic value whatsoever yeah, that's right. you know, yeah. it's like i'm on the ozen pick Sorry, I'm on those MP. Okay, I if you know, yeah. I've, done, I've done a little podcast last week on it. Oh, okay, no, no, no. Yeah. all right, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I agree with that. Like in terms of health, yeah, yeah like so, yeah, it's health. just frustrating. Yeah, to have all this knowledge about health yeah. and well-being and fitness and food, and, but if you're not doing it, and then you're just like, like I'm not going to making those mistakes. And so, health, like mm-hmm. you know, I'm not I'm unhealthy, but like any doctor will see and say you're you're a bit obese, right? Because you're fat yeah. So I've got to get that back on track. Yeah, but that's more for to be there longer for my you know my wife and she, to be there with Shirley, mm-hmm. and to grow and build that relationship to what it needs to be because it changes again once kids be about right so yeah. yeah and then be there for my kids and hopefully their kids and yeah. however long that takes right that's it's it's around family and friends right just to be there for my family as much as I can long yeah yeah and friends yeah yeah because yeah. at the end of the day like work because I know there's a question around legacy. Right. What What do you want to leave for you? Like, That's the last question. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so for me, like, I, it, 
I don't I don't care like in the biggest grand scheme of things, no. you know, I invest the time and work, I could pick it good, I built skill set, and I'm I'm happy and proud of what I did, but that's not the legacy I want to leave. It the legacy I want to leave is like my kids, my wife, you know, like they they use they see me as a role model and they take what I learned, you know, the good and the bad, whatever it is, mm. and it helps them grow into the next iteration of whatever they need to be. And yeah. and they become better than I was. Mm. Right? That's that's kind of like my like become that little bit or a lot better than I was. Yeah. Or is for you quite amazing as you are. <laughs> You're going to make me blush. We're all amazing people, right? We have our own things, right? No, but you are. Like, always say that. Damn, I almost cried near the end. If you so, yeah. get our group, the yeah. reason why we're cool. Yes, but if you cool. look at our group, right? Yeah. Yeah. If you look at our group, Brett, everyone we have in the group brings something special. Yeah. That's why it works. That's why we have to do the testament. Yeah. I'm not saying time because we're still going. <laughs> we're still yeah, going. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what's right. So it doesn't matter yeah, what happens. Yeah. It doesn't matter what anyone is going through. Mm-hmm. Right? It just it just works because we each bring something different. Yeah, that's what makes the group click. Now, I've done some cool stuff. I have a fabulous. I have an amazing family. I have an amazing wife. Like she's she helps a lot. Yeah. All right, and friends help a lot. Right, but again, like if, again, if there's anything different that I'd be doing as well, is just connecting more because we yeah. don't connect enough. Right. Mm-hmm. Like it's not hard to pick up the phone or yeah you're right or just yeah, yeah. you know get around a barbecue or just meet someone yeah. for for lunch and that sort of stuff but it does take time and everyone's you know time is different yeah exactly yeah 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 that's the thing isn't it? I think like it's time yeah, yeah. because you have times for us times against us but the time can be used effectively well, I, as well I, yes <laughs> it can and yeah. I use our dear departed friend Dennis as an example like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's like you just blink and it just changes things just change right so you know, like. Yeah, miss him to bits, but I. Yeah, I think of him a lot. I'm very surprised. Like you know, we, we interacted as we did. Yeah, you know, we we're always in contact. Yeah, like in terms of silly text messages yeah. and all that, but just yeah, it does. It's kind of. He was funny. He was great. He was very very talented. Very smart as well. Yeah, it's still made some silly mistakes. Made some silly mistakes, but yeah. I can now, mate. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a lot of good we friends and Harry people that we still that are still here. Yeah, yeah that, that we may see seldomly, but there are probably people we want to see more of. Mm. Yeah. Just has to make the time. That's it. That's the strength of our friendship. Yeah. So is it. Yeah, yeah. So my legacy is leave this world in a better place than when I first started, especially with my kids and my wife. On that note, I think we're finished. Awesome. Bye, <laughs>
you can quite easily just, depending on who puts a lot of information on their social media, you can quite easily see what they're being up to. They go, oh, yeah, they're doing all right. Are they? It's like, um, exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. You don't know, do you? Until you yeah. actually sit down like now, yeah. talk about it, yeah. and see where we're all going, what direction we're what what page. We're all on the same page, but yeah, it does. <laughs> we keep going, we can pause it. Up to you. I think I can still use this. Yeah. Because it'd be the, out, the outro. Is it the outro? <laughs> Is it the outro? I don't know. So I, 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 um, we can steal a bit from another podcast if you want. You can, I can leave a question for your next guest. It's a good idea. Yeah. All right. But I don't know if it's patented. That's <laughs> all. <laughs> <laughs> What would be what would be the question? Yeah, the same topic. What would be? I'll, I'll write it down. It can be any question. I like so yeah. But I think it's one. It might be one of your questions. I'll steal. He may have asked you already, but anyway. And so this is write down as a question. Question. So the, the question, so quick question from so what? AQ. Yeah. So no, no. So what you could be doing? You just say like so. The la- the the last guest. So me. Yeah. Leaves a question for the next guest. Yeah, yeah. and the next guest leaves a question for the last. Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get the concept. So, yeah. So, what would your question be? Uh, if there's one thing you could change back when you were growing up, what would that be? If there was one thing you could change from, yeah, it's one thing you could change back when you grow. What would it be, and why? Change from your past, or being just young. Change from your past. I keep it in the context of like, yeah. yeah. I didn't want to talk about past lives. We're going to go there. Is it the multi bird worst past times? <laughs> <laughs> the JQ question, the Jason question. Get it for the next guest. Oh, I might have had that on the, on the list. I think you did. I had it as a. Um, plus, do you remember the, any regrets, fearing yes. anxiety? Do you have any further indica- education? Practice moment, first, worst, most memorable drive, talking about jobs, relationship, and kids. Touch on that throughout. Do you keep in touch with school mates? Yep, clearly. Is, is, is that we meet? Yeah, how we met, talked about that. What do we value in friendship? That just carried on through the the whole podcast. Do you think deep, true friendships are rare because we become more settled at as an individual as we get older? I guess we kind of t- touched on that with how we are as human beings and wanting to reconnect, but also just very content. Toler- tolerant the, the way we tolerate the world I think sometimes we, like yes but I think also we think we're infringing on people's priorities therefore we don't ask yeah good point yeah yeah didn't touch on that yeah. mm-hmm. I feel like that sometimes you feel yeah, like yeah. that all the time Brett yeah yeah I know you're right That's but we, in, to be to be honest with you I think that's the anxiety yeah but that's part of the the massive element of the anxiety so action is the answer but because you know what, I, I pin, pin my but I'm sick of trying to catch up with people that you don't. There's always plans. You're like, fucking hell, mate. I know, it's, but it's but yeah, not even about that. It's about the fact that excuse as excuses. Yeah, yeah, I know. No, I'm just telling it, you, this it's my excuse. It's more about like if you think you're going to get a rejection, so it's at least you asked. Yeah, yeah, yeah good point. Yeah, yeah. there's a rejection. I mean, it's like I can't. No, you're right. Yeah, there's an element of a fear, a fear of rejection. Like I feel like I got no friends. Yep, yep. I have felt that. Yep, you have friends. I know. We have friends. And if they choose to say, no, we can't do it now, I go, that's okay. Yep. Just tell me when. No, you're actually right. Yeah. Totally agree. So something I've done with my uni friends is I've put in a, a monthly catch-up. Whether we make it or not, doesn't matter. Yeah, like the placeholder you set up with everyone. So, yeah. Well, I tried with... I, no, I'm not, yeah. I'm not, you, well, you accept you, it. You do whatever your life is, mate. So you try it your life. <laughs> yeah, nuts. Yeah, I think we touched on it, if you really. What did you get in trouble with? You know, what did you get in trouble with the most? But and you, at fab, oh, I didn't ask you at family gatherings what what story got told about you that embarrasses you the most. So the story was there something told today? What's the story that gets told about you from the past that still yeah. gets told today? Yeah, today the same. So the same story my mum <laughs> and my grandma will always tell uh-huh. was the time that my grandmother took me to the butcher. I was three years old, and like walking into the butcher. And my grandma would say, stay there. I'm going to go buy something from the butcher. So we're in the store. She went and talked to the, the butcher. The minute she turned, I ran outside. And if you live in Sunshine, it's called Glengullah Road. Busiest road in Sunshine. Yeah. Right there, right? yeah. <laughs> it was. And so 
all you see is a three or four year old at the end of the like on the edge of the curb ready to run and cross and then my grandmother's coming out and she's about to scream and yell and the butcher goes no take this and tell him to come back so it's cabana and i used to love cabana right (laughs) (laughs) my grandma goes hey jason come here have cabana and then i turned around and i came back Yeah, that, that, story, that story gets told all the time. The other story that gets told all the time, and again, it gets even told if you think people have heard it, was when, again, I was probably four or five, if, if not six years old, in a backyard house in Deer Park. Uh, my mum would watch me be playing outside, and then she'd turn around, and the next minute I was gone, like just vanished. As yeah, yeah, as a kid. My alarm yeah. just freaked. She called my grandfather, my dad, they all came over and like at the house looking for me, and then my grandfather goes, wait. Can you hear something? So walks over to the fence, looks over the neighbor's yard, and there I am just playing with a ball in the neighbor's yard because I climbed over the fence. <laughs> it's like a shit. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Those are the two things. <laughs> Those are the two stories that would always get told every, yeah. all the time, even today. Like it, it keeps getting told. I always get told that I'm adopted <laughs> from the family. Cracks me up more than anything now. Yeah. They used to always add a bit of trauma to me. Like I would always get up. Like, yeah. So they all, the you know, Michael, Tra- Michael Sean and Tracy were like crying. It would be funny. You're adopted. Yeah, uh, adopted. And the other one was there was a, had a um a foster kid that used to always, we were, he was, got into more mischief than I did. He was around the same age, probably about 12, and he would get on the top of the caravan at the side of the house that had a train set in there and get onto the roof of the house. And I got up there to get him down. He gets down. You get in trouble. Yeah, mum came comes out. I oh, get belted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, like good one. But then yeah, I had to like you plead. I had to plead the truth like at seven eight o'clock, and I say, "It wasn't. It wasn't me. It was up there. He got up there, and they're like, ah, oh, we get it now.' Yeah. So because because we were going to you know, public school, yeah, right. In order to do you know the sacraments, I talked about like Holy Communion. That we had to go to uh, like Sunday or Monday school, yeah, which is like Catholic school. And so we used to go once a week, yeah. right? And guaranteed, I'd go Monday, like afternoon, Monday evening, i get a belting from my dad. <laughs> because he would get a phone call <laughs> from the brothers that ran it saying Jason was in trouble and I would just like, Jason would just, <laughs> and like, bang. <laughs> and like, it's just guaranteed. <laughs> and like some days I wouldn't even do anything. Yeah, I just yeah, call yeah. my dad. It's like, yeah, yeah. Hey, me, what I do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just look back at this. Yeah, we're coming in. Okay. Everything, man. It's good. I like it. So yeah, well, I'm, yeah, it'll probably take me about a week to put it all together. No rush, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it takes ages. Like you should see, it's always all fragmented and listed, and you got to cut and paste it, and so a lot, a lot of the pauses. But that was really good, actually. Like comparing it to what I, the podcast I did with Will. That's what thirty years does, mate. I'm telling. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was just weird, like because I, I, I had the same. Thoughts as you did, like you know, the nerves of sitting down and having like a formal kind of conversation about the past, not because of what causes turn all this off. So stop recording. 